The J. Thomas Show. Sirius 108 and XM 139. This is The J. Thomas Show. The interesting, the odd, and the bizarre people behind the, uh... uh interesting. The odd and bizarre stories. Jay gets in, stirs it up, and spits it out. He's a professional. It's all here on The Jay Thomas Show with Rodney Lee Conover, Julie Madison, Kevin Meany, Garrett and Christina, and Ira the Weatherman. This is The Jay Thomas Show. All right. Uh, Rodney Lee Conover is um, in our studios today. For one reason. For one reason and one reason only. That was to relieve you of your very large That's right. white bounce boards. Rodney Conover has bought a 100-acre ranch uh, in California, uh, uh, Garrett and Christina. And you don't, we don't know. The, the man uh, lives a secret life. And um, don't know whether to believe him or not, but he pulled up in a red uh, truck with the brum, 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 all of that sound. With the horse hay in the back. Oh, and awesome. Oh, my It was unbelievable. Goodness. Was he chewing and on straw? Cowboy cowboy boots and yes. beer cans all over the back of the truck. Uh, my son, uh, had. we have a recording studio at our little house, and um, I gave Rodney these two, were they like were the sound shields, right? Yeah. They're sound shields that, that uh, we had built. And we loaded them in the truck. They're nice. They're on wheels. They're cool. I lifted. Uh, they, they must weigh like. You were up there on the back of the pickup. You were lifting shit up. I was impressed. I wasn't in the truck. 20 seconds, something hit my shin. You know that? You know that? <laughs> right? I said, you know what, Rodney? This is starting to feel like work. Uh, you know? Said, he said, I have worked my whole life to avoid shit like Yes, that. I have absolutely no interest in, uh, in stuff like this. Uh, we got um, uh, some emails at... Um, uh, jthomas.com. We are retooling, by the way. Um, I've hired a new um, webmaster guy. And I believe, we're not going to say it today, but I believe uh, the store is now closed and completely cleaned out. Mm. I believe that I have come up with a T-shirt idea. You're always coming up with T-shirt ideas. Well, this is a great one. At the Daily Bread sitting across the room. That's right. This at the Lesbian Bread Shop. Mm -hmm. This is... Is going to be Garrett a seller? This okay. may surpass. It's a mess down there. It might thongs. All right, <laughs> um, that's a biggie. Uh, let's see what I got. It uh, Jay. Jay, I dare you to read this Doctor Seuss poem. This comes from Michael Norton. Norton of um, of of Bell. Oh, Bell South. Oh, that's where he's from. Um, Michael Norton. Norton. Uh, you uh, left-wing commie bastard. All right. That's not what it says. I do not like Uncle Sam. I do not like the health care scam. I do not like these dirty crooks or how they lie and cook the books. I do not like when Congress steals. I do not like their secret deals. I do not like this Speaker Nan. I do not like this Yes We Can. I do not like the spending spree. I'm smart. I know that nothing's free. I do not like your smug replies when I complain about their lies. I do not like this kind of hope. I do not like it because you voted for a big dope. <laughs> I do not like it. Nope, nope, nope. All right. Well, there you go. I read it. I read it. That one line didn't fit. Yeah, none of it did. Kind of but ran, they had to you know, ran a little long. In. They had to get me in there. Uh, but um, we got that one, and then um, Garrett, we got we got one where the guy says he'll never listen again uh, because he's listening. I don't know. Um, he said I made fun of dead people or dead relatives or somebody. Yeah, Isn't that a I, movie? I don't know what. <laughs> I make fun of dead people. Yeah. Um, let me find it. Who? I was trying to figure out who I made fun of. Do you know? That's who? what I was trying. That's why I passed it on to you. I didn't know if you would remember. I could not. Um, he said I died recently. Let's go. Back. He said you. He says you make fun of the. Of 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 dead celebrities and their families, um, I apologize that I don't have well, it maybe it was sitting Keith in front Ledger of me from a hundred years ago. No, this was recent. I don't know who who died, Garrett. I can't remember making uh, fun of the dead. Gary but Coleman he, died. Yeah, but this seems to be recent. He said, "I'll never." He was listening last week. I'll never listen again, and all that kind oh, of stuff. Was, was it a sports Fawcett. guy? Like an announcer or something? I, I, I have no idea, but he said that, um, how would you feel if somebody in your family died? And I'll, I'll find this thing in a minute. How would you feel if someone in your family died? 
and someone made fun of them and all that. Well, I'd be at the funeral. I wouldn't hear it. What uh, I'd what, be, what specifically did he say? I, 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 he, Garrett, do you have the letter in really, front of you? Did it go Garrett? off on you? Or yeah, yeah. Garrett, read, read the email. It was so disturbing that I probably I left it. I know, I left it. it. No, I left it in the bathroom is what I probably did. But... Um, uh, do you have it there, yeah. Garrett? It, it was. You go ahead. And Jay, these do disturb me. Yeah. When I started listening to your show about six months ago, it didn't mm-hmm. take me long to figure out that you were a gutless coward and a royal douchebag. Now you know what, Garrett? Don't add anything to the letter. No, please. no, that's what it said. That's in the letter. Mm-hmm. Furthermore, your show is filled with boredom. However, your deadpan delivery and questions that few interviewers would think of kept me listening part i write you do a great job carrying the show even on the days when you have a wet paint type guest and most importantly you make me laugh even though you are a liberal wine bag okay now wait a minute now 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 that he he i'm no good but he likes me where you lost me oh uh, colon (laughs) oh all right well there's more to it over (laughs) letter's not over recently you've been on this kick of not only insulting but mercilessly, mercilessly Making mm-hmm. fun of recently deceased people and their loved ones. <laughs> hey, all together now. <laughs> really? Mercilessly. <laughs> and if Garrett make ever, fun of you every time you. Make if a Garrett ever, I this do. is from oh, okay. Scott. <laughs> I, <laughs> thank you, Garrett. Scott, what's his name? Mang, uh, Mac Mac Mangle. Uh, Scott. Mm. When Garrett dies, we're going to go like this. Oh, we miss him so much, Scott and Mangle. All right, go ahead, Garrett. Continue. This was. Way over the line, and I can't imagine why it? anyone would stoop to such a level. Mm-hmm. Frankly, I think you have a serious mental issue to be doing this. I certainly hope that you never have to go through a tragedy of losing someone and mm-hmm. then turn on the radio only to hear some unfeeling creep making jokes about it. Did he lose someone? That's the impression I'm getting. No, you said celebrity. They Is it a sol- mer- mercilessly <laughs> making fun of recently deceased people and their loved ones? So it's not celebrity. Oh, I thought he mentioned celebrity in the beginning of the. Email. I think I I think I thought it was celebrity. Is it now? Listen. We Is it someone that. close to Scott? Scott, can you call in? I mean, we yes. talked a lot about the mosque. If you know also. Scott, M C M A N Scott M C. I G L E Scott McManigal, please. Mm. Or, or you know what, Garrett, you have his email. They're emailing back. Please tell him we do not want to lose him. Yeah. Okay. And book him as and a. What, how as do you a, describe yeah. you in that first paragraph, Jay? Uh, he called me the, a uh, liberal wine no, bag. Up further. Up further. A royal douche bag. No, used for that. A uh, gutless coward. Yeah, Scott, that's a good one. I'll have to remember that next and time I'm crawling. Even off your though wall. you have. Wet paint type guests. Um, so Garrett, let's try and find so he's out. In, so he's insulting art as well. A cheap shot garbage man. He also called me. I like that one very much. You know what? I tell you. Should I say? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. I won't say it right now. Uh, Jeff of Cleveland. Uh, who who did? Who hey, did? Going, I, who do you think? Who do you think it was that we made uh, fun of? Well, recently, I think like last couple weeks or so, you made fun of uh, that Woody Johnson's daughter who was going out with Tequila Tequila. Right, she committed suicide. I blamed it on Tequila Tequila, though, and then uh, the crowd at uh, what is, is that it? a brand of tequila? No, it's a whore. Uh, it's a uh, it's a whore. Um, I don't know yeah, if it's Tequila Tequila, and the Woody, she was uh, living with uh, Tequila Tequila. I hold her, by the way, uh, responsible for that uh, young girl's death, e- allegedly. Not that she killed her or anything, but I think that her nuttiness uh, helped drive poor Woody Woody Johnson's daughter over the over the deep end. Yeah, when um, those guys were throwing uh, piss and shit at her, you brought it up again. Yes, I did. Okay. Can't we blame Woody Johnson? No, too? God, no, you can't blame Why him. would you say we can't blame Woody Johnson? He, no, he, he does such a great job raising the kid that the kid kills herself. You can't blame it on the parents. I just did. You can't. I just did. You can't. Way to go, Woody. Uh, last night I was having uh, dinner, and um, I don't believe the woman's listening, but I'll say um, I'm having dinner, and an attractive, you know, a, a zoftic woman is in the... As she's putting the rope around her neck, she says, You gonna give me some attention now, Daddy? Uh, it was, How about this? It was Steven... You got your attention? It was Steven Seagal and Kelly LeBrock's daughter was uh, working at this restaurant, right? 
And she comes up to me and says, hi, how are you? And I say, hi. And I'm sitting there with my wife and, a, and a, one of my wife's friends. And, and, and she sits down and we start talking. And she, within a, a matter of moments, is telling me how upset she is with her dad and how embarrassed it is. And, her, and I said, look, your friends don't know anything about your dad other than he's this big fat guy on a reality show running around in Jefferson Parish, and I think in Arizona now he's going to be the cop thing. And she said to me, isn't that embarrassing? He's fat, and he, when he runs, he huffs and puffs, and he jingles. I said, Why is yeah. that embarrassing? He's ridiculous looking when he chases the criminals. Did she know who you were? She did, and she said, you're very nice, and thanks for talking to me. And then, but, but at first she thought you were Robert Shapiro. No, well, no, that happened two nights ago. Someone thought I was Robert Shapiro. Boy, were you mean to her. <laughs> yeah, Robert Shapiro. And then the woman laughed like this. <laughs> oh, the snorter. And she said, I've always wanted to be in the movies. I said, well, why don't we do a movie called Get Snorty? Uh, and that, that was, was a good one. <laughs> that was the end of our dinner with her. Now, look. So when we were driving away, um, the woman that I was with, her husband doesn't pay attention to the grown daughter. And she said, that child will always be fighting for her father's attention. Much like Woody Johnson's daughter. Why is it that when you're... Unless she's fighting a rope. Especially your dad. Why is it that everybody needs the dad's attention? Jeff, do you have your father's attention or do you feel... Do you feel uh, put upon by the way your dad treats you? Do you and your dad have a good relationship? Well, when I was younger, he was an asshole. But uh, nowadays, he's been coming around more, I guess. Did right. you fight for you his got love? more money than him now? Jeff, did you fight for his love, Jeff? Uh, no. Just let it happen. You let the love happen? <laughs> yeah, just let it go. Now, have you ever thought that maybe it's something that you did that caused your dad... Now, I'm, I'm the father to three children. And many times I get blamed for stuff, and it's their fault, see? Um, what did you do to cause your dad to dislike you? Uh, absolutely nothing. I was a perfect kid. Jeff? Perfect. Jeff? Do you look like your mother? Do I think like my mother? No, do you look like your mother? Uh, yeah, more after her, I guess. That's why he hates you. <laughs> yeah, probably. Are they divorced? No, they're still together. That's why he hates you. <laughs> Every years. time he looks at you, he thinks of her, and he's not happy with your mother. And I don't, I don't know anything about him. I don't know. You know what? This Doctor Laura, if she does leave the air in January, I'm, I'm calling up whatever that company is, because I would love to give advice. Do you think Woody with... Johnson cried at his daughter's funeral? I think he was terribly upset. Terribly upset. Now, I, I met Woody Johnson. Time with her at all. I don't know. I met Woody Johnson. At the Johnson. wake, he spent a little time with her. I met... Now, wait a minute now. Garrett, you're a big <laughs> Jets fan. He looked at her. Why aren't you defending Woody Johnson? He was at the Jets playoff game, I believe, the day after she died. <laughs> there, there you go. Yeah. It's hard to defend them. <laughs> really? And then a guy he, named Woody. They won the game against the Bengals, <laughs> and the team gave them, like, the team game ball. And mm -hmm. usually, you, the, you know, the guy would... Break down and cry. He just got kind of like embarrassed and sat there. Like he, I think he did. Gave they up say on this is for little Johnson, whatever her name Casey. was. The, oh my God! Wait a minute. His name is Johnson, and her name is Johnson. Yeah, that's its daughter. Two, two Johnsons. Well, I find Johnson that hard to Johnson. swallow. You know, um, <laughs> I want to say that it was Frankie Valley of Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons. I believe his. <sighs> I could be wrong, but anyway, I, I will find Woody out. Woody Johnson sounds like the perfect father. I think his daughter died or whatever, and then that night he buried her, and then he performed in like Atlantic City that night. You know? I had to pay for that funeral. You know, I guess. Expensive. I don't know. I, I think, you know, there was a kid. How can you not blame place blame on Woody Johnson? There was a kid at the Indianapolis 500 You're who died. He was 13. Was he, was he in the trunk of one of the cars? No, no. He was on one of those little motorcycles, right? And he they was in let a, him race in the Indianapolis yeah, oh God, on a motorcycle? Yeah, yeah. And he was the number one kid in the country, and he's going around. He fell off the bike during a practice round. An 11-year-old kid ran over his head, and he died, right? This just happened over the weekend. You know whose fault that is? Who? Woody Johnson. The father on his Facebook did the thing that I think is just awful. Little little Skipper died doing what he loved to do, and he is in a better place, and I hope that we're all there with you one day. Miss you, kiddo. Now, I am sorry, but if your kid dies on a Saturday 
And by Monday morning, that's on the Facebook. I think that is such bullshit. Just total bullshit. So, so I do have a, a place for the, for dead. Um, how would, how would you yeah. name your kid Woody Johnson? Well, first of all, I don't think his family likes him. Apparently, Can I be honest no. with you? I'm going to be honest. Garrett, you know, I did that pilot at Fox and there's no chance it'll ever go. And Woody was on it. He will not stop wearing the Jets hat and the Jets tie. He wears it everywhere. So he's so excited that he owns the team, and he's a douchebag. He 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 is. He's a fucking douchebag. Uh, no, no. Let's let me get, get the letter. Let me get the letter. Let's get it. Garrett, out there. what what was I called? What was I called? A gutless coward and a whiny liberal douchebag. No, royal. I believe I was a royal, royal douchebag. Yes, ah, right. royal douchebag. That's when you have five douchebags that, in the same that, suit. That's right. <laughs> I think I think he's a royal douchebag, and I'm a regular douchebag. But I found him to what a cock. Do you see him on that HBO show? I, I he's a dick. I found him. I he's named Woody. I found him <laughs> to be um, kind of like removed. And he's oh, very he's... upset that everybody thinks that because he was the heir to the Johnson & Johnson fortune that he didn't work hard for his <laughs> money. <laughs> yeah, he worked real hard. Well, I'll tell you what. I, he wasn't spending time with his family. I'll excuse me one second. <laughs> I know how Woody feels. You know why? I lifted something heavy today <laughs> before the show. And, I, and the thing hit my shin. And I went, wow, this is work. This is real work. Did it really hit your shin? It did. It right when I got up in the you, you, Jeff. You ever get in the truck and you're lifting something and it hits your shin? Oh yeah. Now we bought something at uh, at was it at the Walmart today and could not figure out how to work it. Well, no, no, we could work it. We just couldn't get it out of the package. Rodney bragged about this thing. Like it isn't a bungee cord, but it's in a it's, it's in a hitch. A, it's in a set yeah. and it's in a hitch. We couldn't get the hitches out of the package. Yeah. <laughs> and it was written in every language known to man, <laughs> right? Get those out and of it there. kept saying, pull, pull up, up and pull slide. Out, slide. Pull out. up and slide. All right. Hey, listen, Jeff, you think it was uh, Woody Johnson and Tila Tequila. I do not think. Woody Johnson's kid. Whatever. Yeah, I don't I don't think that's it. That was a while ago. But thank you uh, for All the right. good guess. Thanks, thank you. Uh, let's go to Brad of Illinois. Hello, Brad. It's Jay Thomas. How are you? Uh, Brad, can you turn your radio down, please? There's a thing I called the, the satellite bounce. Now, wait a minute. Think about this. <laughs> My voice leaves California. It goes into outer space. It bounces off of a satellite, and then it gets into your home car or truck. Think about that. Now, now, when you talk right now, Brad, your voice is going to go from your car or truck up to the satellite and then back. I mean, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, I've never thought about it. Thank you for enlightening me. And, and listen to this. If there is anybody out there, they might hear you right now. In space? Yes, sir. Wow. No Thanks, shit. Jade. By the way, say something in case. Th what would you say if, a, if an alien is listening to you? What would you say? By the way, this is Brad of Illinois, aliens. Go ahead, Brad. What would I say to a you are representing the United States. They've suddenly tuned in by accident, and they don't hear me. They hear you. The frequency they have is you. What would you say? I would ask them if I could trade in my truck for a new one. <laughs> right. <laughs> there you go. You know what? You're a liberal. I can tell you that right now. No, yeah. no, no. If I have two cows, I don't want to share them. I want both my cows and all the milk. I'm not a oh. liberal. I just oh. work hard, and I would like a better truck. Come on. All right. That's. Can you imagine the aliens come down and they think that that would that they give him a better truck, Rodney? That would be the answer to everything. <laughs> That like? Just what? a newer truck. I have pride. Newer one. Now, Rodney's anyway, truck is three. You have three hundred thousand miles in your truck, right? Yes, three hundred thousand. Now, uh, what did you call about, Brad? Who do you uh, think uh, the death was? Who do I think what? Oh, what did you call about? I'm sorry, I was talking about the uh, a death oh, letter that I got. Mm -hmm. No, I, I called earlier because you said you wanted to be like Doctor Laura, and I know you have teenage sons, and I have yes. with my teenage son, and I would like to see if you can help me, please. Yes, I will. I will do everything I can. Let's go. All right, let's start out with Dr. J so I feel better. I'm going to lay back a little bit. Here I go. I um, started out my life, 30-second background. I came from a family of burglars, killers, and thieves. My wife came from a family of drug addicts. We decided 20 years ago, no robbery, no drugs, no nothing. We're going to raise our kids right. We're now, wait a minute. Now, wait a second. Hold it a minute. One second. 
your family, murderers and thieves. So, and drug dealers and wow. Dealers. Hold on, hold on. Murderers. My father, also. Your father, did he murder anybody, your dad? No, my, my father stole $2 million and went to federal prison when he was supposed to meet me in Vegas. Where's the $2 million? Yeah, where's, where's the, the $2 million? Yeah, where did he hide it? <laughs> I don't know where he hid it. I oh, come on. worked his whole life. Uh, I did not he, know that he was doing The witness it. will answer the question? You know what, Brad? If you're going to lie to us, this yeah. is what Dr. Laura would do to you. If you're going to fucking lie to us, then uh, then you're lying to yourself, okay? He was supposed I to meet you in that. Vegas with the money? Before we get no, to your no. son, where is the money? No money. I'm sorry. That, that he was going to meet me in Vegas, but he went to prison instead. And I think he already spent it. And then they took his whole. Uh, he says they took everything that he had for his retirement. And he's uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, what he sort of? Re- excuse me, one second, Brad. What sort of retirement do drug dealers have usually? What's the union? Four one k. Yeah. What's the union oh. like? Mm-hmm. My, my dad wasn't a drug dealer. He set up a ghost company where he worked, and he sold his own company products mm-hmm. that he bought at a lower price, and he didn't pay taxes on it. And over 20 years, he made like $14 million. And he oh, wow. never gave me a dime of it. He lives in California. I live mm-hmm. in Illinois. And then we were going to meet him for, uh, you know, I hadn't talked to him for 20 years because he was a piece of crap father. And then he said, oh, come on, let's get together. I get up there, and my brother says he went to prison, and he's going to be gone a long time. And I'm Typical. Sorry, so. Typical. Typical. 401 that's kilo is what he's got. Okay, yeah, that's so that's, that's your dad, and your your wife is from just the drug addicts. The drug addicts are the um, other two brothers of his, and then the other brother killed three people, got the death penalty, they overturned it, and now he's uh-huh. out, and he's out in society. He killed a cop and two other people, and Jesus. four years later, they let him out. So anyway, that's my dad. Now, does he come to visit you? What do you do when you entertain? Where's that two million? Yeah, what do you do when you entertain a killer who's just gotten out of prison? Do you? Is yeah, it uncomfortable you the first few minutes? Huh? You won't believe it. <laughs> What? My mother what? went with me. We went to Lake Delavan in Wisconsin. We got a boat, and I walked out of the shore, and I let this killer drive my mother in their car together to go on the lake <laughs> boat with us. I introduced him to all my family as Uncle Johnny. <laughs> it's the only family I have that's out of prison that I could tell my kids is their uncle, and I didn't. So tell him Uncle Johnny, the murderer, uh, is right. is water skiing uh, right now. Right. Yeah, okay, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Now the and the wife has the drug addicts. Okay, so what's what's yeah, it? Uh, Hold it a second. And you have a, a problem with your 19-year-old son. No, my wife and I decided we're not going to do drugs. I never drank alcohol in front of my kids. I drink you know, right. weddings and stuff. I'm not a drinker. We right. never we smoked a little weed. Never in the house. Never did anything but take him to church, get him to school, do everything right. 17, he runs away, says that my dad's an abusive alcoholic, and my mom's and he makes up this big lie, and um, the cops believe him. They come back. They find out I'm telling the truth. Now, two years later, we let him back in. <clears throat> We're helping him get a GED. He says, Dad, I got to go work in the morning. He's got a backpack on his back. And he says, I got to go to work in the morning. I'm going to take this stuff, and I'm not going to be home tonight. I said, okay, fine. 30 minutes later, he comes home, throws the backpack in the basement of my house with my 12-year-old daughter and my wife in it, and he leaves. He doesn't come back. The next morning, we can't stand it. We have to know what's in the backpack. So I Does he know. have the $2 million in there is all Rodney and I care about? Oh, my God, I wish. Okay. No, he doesn't know my dad. The uh, crackhead doesn't fall very far from the tree. No, the crackhead does not fall far from the cre- tree. Now, what was in the backpack? Go ahead. Okay. It was a black BB gun with the orange thing taken off to look like a real gun, a black bandana tied where you would put it over your face, a <laughs> hoodie jacket that's white and a hoodie jacket that's black. So I think after you do the robbery, you can change your jacket. So he brought all that back into my house and left. And the next morning when I called him, I said, what is this? You know, I wanted him to tell me he's squirrel hunting and he's an idiot. And he's yeah. I'm in Vegas with something. Grandpa. Yeah, so, Dad, it's just a BB gun. I said, no, Brad, it is the contents of the container. You know, everything together is a robbery kit, so I'm not an idiot. And he's like, oh, my God, I can't believe you want to put me in prison, and I want to know if I should call the police or if I should let them rob people. I worked hard for 20 years. Hold on, hold on, we, we hold have, on. We have a something we got to get straight. How much did he steal? Yeah, where's the I mean, money? We can't answer yeah, where's the money? until we know what we're talking about. Where's the money? There's no money. I think he's robbing little kids for like pot deals or something. You know, like you said. You know what? To be on, I have to tell you something. I mean this. This is a phase. He's (laughs) he's a bad kid. Oh, there's no help for him. He's a bad kid. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? You know what? What, You know something? When he's got the two hoodies and the mask Uh, and the gun and the whole thing. How did he learn right. that? Yeah, where did he where did he get that training? Yeah. 
we hit it off. My wife said it's my genes. That it's genetic. Oh come it, on! It, it's it's not right because I can't control my genes anyway. So it's not like no, I you can't. Say about it. You I'll know something? I can't control oh, mine. You've got to find oh, out who he robbed. Hey, you've got to find out who he robbed. Well, his ex-girlfriend says it was two 12-year-old boys three months ago, and we dismissed that as poo-poo because it was his ex-girlfriend. But now that this came up, yeah. we don't know if he's been doing it. There's been a lot of robberies in my town. And, you know, I'm almost to the point, if he did 15 of them and he got away with them, I'd almost be proud of him that he did something. You know, at least he knew how to do something. Yeah, he's ambitious. You know something? Pro- Why don't you, I tell you what prolific. you do. Say to him, look, son, I've always wanted to do a robbery. Take me with you. Let's share something together. Yeah, the father and son robbery. That's what I think. And you know what? You have to wear a bandana that looks kind of like a terrorist. You need to wear like a checkered one or something. Something really cool. And you know what? When he points the gun, get behind him and teach him to point it like you're, like a golf swing. Like yes. your dad would get behind you. Here's how you swing the club. But this is just pointing And I'll tell you why this will stop the thing. robbing spree. Every time I've tried to share something with my kids, they quit doing it. Okay, if I want to coach a sport with them, they hate me. If I want to teach them how to throw a ball, kid, they hate my. Tell guts. your kid That's right. that you hate little kids that get good grades. Tell your yeah. son you've always wanted to rob a twelve-year-old, and yeah. he takes you. Now you need to get a backpack, and a bandana, and a mask, and you need to put it right next to his, and say, "Son, let's let you and I do something together, you and me." I mean, well, it's, it's other, otherwise you have to turn him into the police. Well, now, like now, wait a second. Now, look, Brad, I'm going to let you go after this, but this is the truth. Okay. Do this with your son with no no bullets, okay? And if you get caught, and I mean this, if you and your son get caught, Rodney and I will sell this to the Hallmark Channel. Okay. I mean it. Uh, thank, thank Rodney? You, Dr. Based on a true story. Based on a true story, Okay. Yeah, that would be. You know something? How did this kid learn all this shit? Honestly, Brad. If you get the internet, the internet, come on, Brad. The the internet. You have no idea. Daughter at home. I have a twelve year old daughter at home. Straight A student on the volleyball team championship. She can't understand what her brother's doing. She was. They're not raised this way. I used to always blame the parent, but I can't anymore because I couldn't have done anything different or better. I did the best. Well, has the uncle or grandpa visited uh, recently? No, they've never been around in my life. They haven't even visited. I haven't even let them see my dad because my dad never paid child support for me. Why don't you send him to live with Uncle Johnny? Um, he's in Long Beach, right by you. I could do that. Yeah. What city in Illinois are you in? Yeah, what I'm city in, in Illinois? Rockford. 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 Oh, that yeah. sucks. Now, all right, Brad, we'll say goodbye, but I do mean this. I all bet right. you 10 bucks that you guys make a big deal out of your daughter. We do. Okay. <laughs> she, you got to stop it. Our pride. You got to stop it. Jay, yeah, have you ever seen high school volleyball girl outfits? Oh, yes, I, I have. make a big deal about yeah. it, too. Two words. No, you know, camel toe. Hey, you know what? <laughs> Brad, I'm not yeah. kidding you. We have this kid that everyone compliments all the time, and it gave his younger brother such a fucking complex. And and he was. Tall hand, football, baseball, bat, he would, whatever. The little one, you know, we got him on a soccer team. He would duck when the ball came to him. Uh, hey, did- we, we got him on a baseball team, and a little girl on the team spit sunflower seed shells on him and he quit the team okay he it was just awful meanwhile his brother hits three or four home runs at the practice game and then decides baseball's too easy and doesn't play i'm telling you what my wife and i did we do not treat the one that uh, is handsome and tall and there we stopped treating him special well, I don't you... get what they deserve, though. I mean, if he no, that, fuck no. You know what? Your daughter is supposed to get straight A's. She's supposed to be great in sports. And so when oh, she comes true. home and says, Dad, I did this, you go, well, great. You've accomplished um, what you're supposed to accomplish. And, and that's what you do. And you turn to your son and go, son, how many robberies did you do this week? And how did it turn out for you? That's what you do. Dave, Dave that was absolutely good advice. You made me feel better. Thank you, Dr. J. All right. Good luck My pleasure. You. Good God. Thank hey, Jay. you. Yeah. Did you know that Jesus, I wasn't I wasn't kidding just now. Did you know that Jesus had a brother? I you know what? I just saw on the you know the History Channel. I am surprised that the religious right doesn't attack the History Channel. They're always saying things about Christ having a, bro- a brother. But they Christians believe Christ had a brother. 
I have ne- I mean, I went to Catholic school my whole life. I never heard that once. Can you imagine? Same mom or same father? Same mom. They don't know if it was... No, ju- no, no, no. Mary had a natural kids after G- after the virgin yeah. birth. That's wow. right. That's yeah. right. Can you imagine? You come home and your mom says, bad grades again? You know, your brother walks on water. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't you be more like him? And well, that's the- what the life... Hey, of- here's a fish. Feed the poor. <laughs> that's what the life of Brian is about. They find, you know, what they find, they go, they think it's Jesus, but it's his next door neighbor. That's who Brian is. All right. And they one follow one group follows his shoe, the other the follows gourd. the gourd. The yeah. Sandal. Jay, uh, two more suggestions of who you made fun of have come. Yes, in. sure. Uh, one is the uh, U.S. military who have lost their lives mm. for freedom. I didn't make fun of them. That's true. And I it, said, "Don't die for my freedom, please." That's what I said. And the father called up, and was very upset. And and my statement is is that. Given all the information that we have, and Rodney and I have discussed this too, why in God's name, knowing that it's a mess over there, why do people keep joining? I don't get it. And that's really what it was. So that guy got, but I didn't, I certainly would never make fun of, uh, uh, army, army guys or gals getting, getting shot. Now I did say that I was upset that the lesbian was thrown out of West Point because I can't think of anything more exciting than following a bull dyke up San Juan Hill. I did say that. And the uh, second one was... Hold uh, on a second. Rodney, you weren't here for that. They threw this really? number number one cadet out and because she was a lesbian. Would you follow a, I mean, a bull dyke lieutenant into battle? Would you do that? I would. I would, too. I would, too. If you're willing, right, to die for your country... If right? you're good at it. And you're good at it. And what are they there to learn? At the academy? Yeah. How to kill people and blow shit up. That's it. Let's quit pretending. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. The second one is the people that died at the truck race. Oh, that was funny. The though. off-roading funny. truck race. Yeah. And then it yeah. happens at a place called, you know, uh, Joshua Tree. That's what really You know what? I, 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 was, I, say, I think I went out of my way to say, I'm glad that no children were killed. I did say yeah, that. Don't you find it ironic that mm-hmm. at Joshua Tree, 12 people were killed? I don't know what that means. Did we well, mention jo- the Joshua Tree is a reference to Christ, and mm-hmm. he had 12 uh, apostles. Wow. Yeah. Right. Um, here's, I'm trying to think. But, oh, I know what I said. And a brother. They buried their tattoos separately. That's what I said at the truck race. You know what? If you go to a race and you're standing next to a car going by you at 110 miles an hour. no fence. I mean, come on. And a curve. Come on. You shouldn't have your children there. and You you shouldn't. Mm -mm. So that's Darwin. Okay. Who else? Could it have been the female golfer? Oh, there you go. That was bad. She committed suicide. She committed suicide. We asked. You know why? Uh, Yes. Wait a minute now. Tila, Tila, Tila. What's her Tila, name? Tila, Tila, Tequila. Tequila. I can't. Yeah. Tila, Tequila. You know what's Wait fun, Garrett? I've watched Rodney get old right in front of me. You know, that inability hey, you're the one to... you your shin today. Ow. Do you guys um, believe that was a suicide? Yes. Really? Well, we have the 911 call. Should we rerun it in a few moments? Ah, uh, sure. The you woman... Think, why? You think someone killed her, Garrett? Well, I'm going to... Sh- the guy was a doctor, right? Is he a doctor? Yes, what he guy? was a doctor. What guy? Her friend. Her friend. Guilty. The one and that found her and then threw away the suicide note. Oh, and I didn't all the know pill. that part. Wait yeah. a second. Now, Here. did she? Did he also? Did she Wait. sign the wrong scar card? Here's <laughs> here's how she died. She put a plastic bag on her feet and a plastic bag around her head and asphyxiated herself. Oh, you can't do that. You cannot asphyxiate yourself. They cannot yourself. arrest him. It's impossible. All right, we will play that 911 call. It may be the golfer. Wow. It and you know, if golfer. you asphyxiate, asphyxiate yourself. Asphyxiate. Asphyxiate. <laughs> <laughs> this may be my greatest triumph. Mercilessly. <laughs> if you mercilessly <laughs> asphyxiate yourself. Mercilessly. Good evening, gentlemen. If you do that, that's uh, two strokes. Say so it again. Know? If you do what? <laughs> a long way for that joke. But wait a minute. It would be a better joke. Asphyxiate. I was making a joke. Oh, you got to say it fast. No. Asphyxiate. I can say it slow, really? fast. I'm sure. Would you stop saying really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to start saying okay. Wow. I'm going to say I think okay. that's the first time he's ever agreed to do no, something. No, I'm going to say okay. Oh, okay is the other one. <laughs> By the way, oh, the lovely... 
<laughs> I didn't know that. The lovely Christina He's turned Palumbo. His cat butt to me, by the way. Um, a guy named Ingo Koch uh, mm. emailed me. He said, you always call her Ingo. the lovely Christina Palumbo. Would you say that about her if she was ugly? No. You know... Um, I don't think you would. You know, we've had some ugly ones in we there. We have. We had some beastos. Did I call anybody that was ugly, lovely, Garrett? Never. Or just would say Did their name. Did you ever call uh, Lou lovely? No, I never called Lou lovely. Well, there you go. No. Um, Christina is cute. She doesn't... I don't, think, I don't she, think she's cute. I think she's more on the beautiful side. <laughs> I think... I you know what? I can't be in here for this conversation. You are the most beautiful woman I've ever met who doesn't seem to wash her hair regularly. You're crazy. I wash it every single morning. Then you don't use the lustrous sheen stuff you're supposed no, to. I use Pantene. Yeah, well, she your was hair looks the dry. She for two weeks, too. Your hair looks brittle. My hair does brittle. not look brittle and dry. It does. No, it doesn't. Your hair looks brittle, and sometimes I, I see some... Cut. Garrett, look at I it. I see some alkaline on shiny? your chin. It just cracked a little. There's a little alkaline on your chin. <laughs> Stay where you are. We'll hear that 911 call, and we're going to have you decide if you, you think it was murder oh, or yeah. not. And the God, dry hair, God. but lovely, lovely. I have... Christ- you know what you look? i tell you what. Did you ever see G.I. Jane? <gasps> That's a good look. No, I oh. And the great Garrett Anderson, of course, no one can beat Rodney Lee Conover when he's on the show. Stay where you are. Email me, uh, Jay Thomas Show at SiriusXM in the subject line. Recommend a holiday road, and uh, you have until September 3rd, I believe, Correct. to get it all in. And then uh, we'll stop it, you know, at September 3rd, and Ira's going to draw uh, a random name, $500. How do we decide which holiday roads we're going to use? I've allowed Garrett Andritz and Christina and Andrea Bushy to to be the the uh, uh, the people that that decide it, okay? But it's just kind of like um, a wonderful random thing you've you've added to the show, and then somebody will win uh, five hundred dollars after September third. Tracy Phillips from FanCast dot com, <clears throat> who has beautiful, luxurious hair in this picture I'm looking at. Uh, we'll talk about the Emmys and fall television. Uh, Christina, do you know this um, Tracy Phillips? Do you know her? No. You know her. Should I ask her about her some hair styling tips? You know what? You've got to move on from this. Okay, we did it. It's you just over brought up the hair. It's over now. That was before the break. New, new. You know what? When you're a little kid, you're playing army. New man. Okay. <laughs> what? Um, you get shot, and you go new man. You get up, you keep playing. No. Uh, dream. Right, Garrett. Yes. New man. Correct. New man. Right, Rodney. That's yeah, uh. New yeah. man. Okay. Cowboy. <laughs> Dead. New man. Uh, <laughs> dream girls and bedtime stories. She was in those movies. Now I wonder if she played an announcer in those movies. And and she might have played a hostess in the Gladiators. So, I believe she was a contestant. Ah, that's ah, what I said, Jay. Wow. America, oh, yes. The old, the 80s one. The good one. Yeah, the good one. Well, yeah. she's going to talk about the Emmys last night. Let's now, talk about gladiators when she's on. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it. You remember they beat each other with those giant Q-tips? Yeah. Well, well you know, that, that show. Kind of favorite. Yeah, I love that. The original that, that, I, that was on like 20 years ago, I actually was interested in one of the women that was on it. And <laughs> she beat me arm wrestling. So fast. You remember that, Ronnie? Came to the studio, Power 106. That would say he came with a sling. She, I mean, Garrett, it was so fast, I couldn't believe it. And I guess they were on something, because, you know, they had the square chins, you know, and they kind of were mannish looking. But those women were so tough that, I mean, not a joke. And then the stuff they did was truly dangerous. And, I mean, you know, rough. And those guys, forget, but, man. Man, oh man! Has a woman ever beaten you arm wrestling, Garrett? Uh no. I would always decline if it was a possibility. If a woman, well, oh, here's another one. You wouldn't the even give th- a shot. You know what? When I was at, like ten years old, this girl threw me down on the bed <laughs> and then kind of put her legs on my arms so I couldn't move, and then held my hands. And I didn't know what it was, but I knew I liked something about it. <laughs> And I, I was 10. I'm looking up, you know, and I'm going, God, I, I think I'm supposed to, like, bite something or lick something or do something. And I went, wow, what was that? You know? And, and she was like, oof, wow. Hmm. I think Tracy Phillips is here soon. Um, 
Did anybody watch the... Uh, did you watch the Emmys, uh, Christina? Yep, I watched part of it. Did you enjoy it? Um, You know, it was all right. Did your shows win? Well, Modern Family took it on. Oh, my um, God. That's you mean amazing. a bunch of gay people controlled it's the voting again? Of... Really? Do you did watch Glee... Modern Family? It is a wonderful show. It's did Glee hilarious. win? Did Glee win? Yeah, they won some stuff. Oh, my God. They didn't. I don't think they won. Well, how about um, the star the of woman Glee? in Glee? The, she's got Jane the short Lynch. hair. She won. Right? Yeah, did Jane Lynch win? Mm-hmm. Supporting oh, my God. This you're is ki- what I don't understand. Is Lynch Jackie a comedy? No. So why did it's she supposed win? To be. It's for... supposed to be. I have no idea. I'm it's very a, it's disappointed. such a rip off of how. When I was on Murphy Brown, and I am proud to say I won two, uh, I was nominated three times and won twice. Uh, Power 106 was not just a dance station, but you know who loves to dance and who loved to dance, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was that it was that dance that was that techno dance stuff. I was also the grand marshal for about ten years of the gay pride parade. With you and uh, well, yeah, with um, you know him, you know the Richard Simmons, uh, and and uh, Rodney, I love you. Right. I mean, we had a huge gay following, and so did Murphy Brown. And I truly believe that the gay vote got me in. Okay, and and they are so powerful. And when I see these shows, and then I look at what America is, they have no interest in gay marriage, and they're fighting against it, and yet all of these shows that some huge number of people are watching, like 10% of the of the country watches television, I mean, you know, like in individual shows, 20, 30 million people will watch a big hit show, uh, I don't quite understand it. I don't get it. Well, the guy that well, won isn't really gay. He just plays someone that's gay. Don't you think oh. it's just that everybody's a little <laughs> slow and eventually it'll start to resonate into their brains and, you know, the rest of the people that haven't caught on yet will start to realize it? It's just a process. I Can I ask you a personal question, Christina? Sure. Oh, what is in your nose today? Oh, what please. Is I've up? been dying. I've been on What's death up in watch. There? Everything. You know what? I, if I was there now, do you know what I would do for you? And it's Send a clean me home? Up? No. I'd put my mouth around your nose Ew. and suck the snot Gross. out of it. Oh, I've seen that happen in a restaurant I have, too. Oh. We talked about it. Yeah. So Rodney, disgusting. it's the best way to get snot out of a stuffy if nose. It's not snot, though. It won't move. Uh, really? I've got snot in my dick right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You know I what? throw up. Excuse me one second. Uh, I think I need a little separation. We'll be right back. Rodney Lee Conover is here. Hi, the Jay Thomas Show and 888-4-102-102, our direct line. Uh, and, of course, if you have any sort of emotional problem, I'm uh, willing to, to help you as I plan on taking over the Dr. Laura Show in January with real advice. Okay? Real advice. This gave a man who is pretty sure that his son is a uh, cat burglar, and he had uh, two sets of, uh, of hoodies, uh, one for the robbery, one to escape. Uh, the fake gun that he robs 12-year-olds with, the backpack with the robbing uh, kid in it. And I told him he should go out, begin robbing with his son, and putting his A-student volleyball champion daughter down in front of the older boy. That is real life advice, and I stand by it. Now, uh, this weekend, Tiger Woods, uh, moments after his divorce was final, he shoots one of the best rounds he's ever had. Let's go to my friend TK, former PGA uh, professional caddy and announcer for CBS, who now lives at Hilton Head. Uh, uh, TK, welcome to the show. Um, I miss you back here in California. How are you, TK? Jay, uh, marvelous, happy. Rodney, hello, and ladies and gentlemen, hello. Uh, I've been spending all morning walking up this wonderful little uh, beach property looking for our house for October for you and you all. Right. Well, I'll be there. Now, let's talk golf. What do you think... You uh, golf, you want to talk about sucking noses. No. Here's my question. Do you think Tiger Woods is getting... What do you hear? Is he getting laid again? And yes. I mean this. Yes. You And is it yes. more than one He's woman? Is it? Some. He's finally getting some. After his divorce, the get floodgates came open again. Now, you know, you got to understand that. That's, it makes sense. More than yes, it does. Out. He came back... He's not married. He's seven. Yeah, he did. He did. How do you feel about him finishing 12th? I mean, does that mean you... I don't you... care about Tiger Woods. Really? Yeah, no, I'm done. I'm I'm uh, I'm all over the dust and the new the new I can't can't figure it out. The new what? 
the new guy that can't figure it out. He's lost two majors now because of problems. He hired a local caddy at Pebble, and then he got his other caddy back, and the other caddy abandoned him. I think I might have to go back out there. So Tiger Woods, and by the way, what do people think of him personally? <laughs> what, what do they think of him personally? It's right down the middle, Jay. It's right down the middle, Jay. TK, you must admit that mm -hmm. when Tiger comes close to winning that first post Divorce tournament. The entire crowd is going to be pro Tiger. They're going to go. Oh, it's, crazy. It, no! It'll be bigger than anything. I'm trying. <laughs> see, the thing is, I'm trying to pull the tide back in on him. I don't want. I'm, I'm trying to cause all today. kinds of all kinds of problems for him on Sundays because I got a bet that he won't do it. So, so you know. are you the guy that stands around the green while he's putting and goes jackass? I have a. I have my people. <laughs> now here's the thing, and this is the truth. I have my people. Half the people that watch golf have stopped watching because uh, people that don't even like golf like to watch Tiger Woods. They show Tiger now, even though he's completely out of the running, because nobody gives a shit about But he's not out of the running, isn't he? You, you have to finish in the top 70, and he's 65? No, but he was done, and they were showing him on Sunday. He didn't have a chance Rodney. of winning. Yeah. yeah. Rodney, Jay, Jay, those announcers, those network idiots are so yeah. fickle. One second, they're on his shit, and the next minute, he's God. I'm through with it. You're, but it's going to hurt golf. You know what? Some other guy will come up. How about a Bubba Watson, a lefty? How about, you know, another... John who? Daly? It, Bubba, who? Bubba, Bubba Watson. Watson. Who? It, the guy can drive a golf ball 450 who? yards, Jay. So... You know what we need? We, he, hey, he, you know what, TK? How about a little How's this short power? game? Little you know power. what, TK? Ooh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask a real question, and I mean this. The is there is? another? Is there another? There's got to be a a young, incredible black golfer out there somewhere. I think. Jay, I've I got think, two of them. What are their names? I, I bought, yeah, oh, I bought two of them about six months ago. They're on a farm learning how to hit golf balls. No. I bought two of them. <laughs> no, you didn't. He's not joking. Oh, I swear that. I did. Why are you I laughing? I believe I that. Jay, Jay, it's uh -huh. in the South. You can buy anything. It's out here. You buy No, it. you're not. What I, I mean that, though. They, I think one of the exciting things about Tiger is he was multiracial. Same thing with Barack Obama. It's funny. They never call him Asian. They don't. His, his the, name is Eldridge. I know it is. But the thing oh, is, is that. Eldridge. I believe. Why, why isn't he ever referred to as the Asian Tiger Woods? Well, because he's, you know what? I don't know why you're and right. Why about isn't Barack Obama ever talk about the white side of his family? Because you guys it isn't. Want to get political? Hey, you guys no. want to get political? I've got to get back to the beach. I've got two gals waiting for their strawberry margaritas. Jay, I love you. I got this place. I'm going to send Sally the pictures. All and right, did you sure. See the, hey, did you see the eight foot alligator on the golf course? I, I did. You sent me the picture of the alligator walking across the golf course. Unbelievable. No. We had our golf balls over here, and the guy said, don't go down there. And I go, what do you mean don't go down there? He says, you don't want to go down there. Ralph's down there. I go, who the hell's Ralph? He goes, well, trust me. And sure enough, here comes Ralph. The alligator. Ralph. They got it at Ralphie. It's like the oh. Colorado. They got the mascot. Oh, they got names for their goddamn alligators out here. All and right. There's bugs. There's All right. bugs, Jay. There's lots of bugs. Uh, uh, Garrett, it's time. All right. Thank you, TK, Goodbye. very much. Bye-bye. That was thrilling. Almost 4 o'clock back east, and he sounds like he's feeling no pain whatsoever. None. Um, uh, Garrett, how much more time do we have before the top? About a minute. About a minute. Uh, Bill of Pittsburgh, what can I help you with, Bill? Bill? Hey, Bill. Your turn to talk Bill? to my friend. Pittsburgh, Bill. Bill? Let it fly, buddy. Bill's not there? All right. That's it. Okay. Uh, coming up, uh, Tracy... Phillips, who was a contestant. Is that Bum Phillips' daughter? <laughs> yeah, anybody? I'm not kidding. No, I don't think so. I think it is. Can't be. I'll bet it is. She doesn't have that. No, no, no. That's Bum Phillips' granddaughter. Excuse me. It's what's his name's daughter. Really? The other coach, yeah. Well, we'll find out. Yeah. And we'll talk about the Emmys, okay? And if gays dominate the Emmys. Let's find out a little controversy on the Jay Thomas Show with Rodney Lee Conover. I know this girl. You are 100% correct. Get out of I, here. Hey, yes. Garrett, I know Tracy Phillips. Oh, my God. You're kidding? I know her. 
She's got to be a great gal yeah. if Bum Phillips is her granddad. Yeah. And Wade Phillips is her daddy? Let me, let me show you the uh, interview I did. Generation. Well, I'm uh, sure Tracy uh, Phillips uh, that we just uh, found out uh, is a... Uh, 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 Bum's granddaughter and, of course, Wade's daughter. Tracy, welcome to the Jay Thomas Show. I'm from New Orleans. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Did you ever live in New Orleans when your granddad was... He coached for a minute at the Saints, didn't he? Actually, actually, that would be a different Tracy Phillips, but... <laughs> You're not related to Bum Phillips, the coach? No. No. Do you know that, do you know that we are putting your picture up <laughs> next to the... You look you know, very. This, you look so much happens, like her. It happens, it happens all the time, and people think I'm a burlesque dancer. So I, you know, that might actually be better off for me in the long run. <laughs> Wait a minute, Bum Phillips' granddaughters are burlesque dancers. Yes. Yes. You know what? You you want to hear something crazy? <laughs> I emcee these burlesque shows in New Orleans, and she is one of the stars of it. I didn't realize it was her uh, yeah. that her grand. I'll, well, you're gorgeous on your own, but Tracy Phil, it's not an insult. She's a little older than it's, you are, though. It's not. A, I, I, I get that a lot, which is kind of funny. So I got to tell you, you look like <laughs> relatives. The at, same eyes? And at everything. the very least, you look like relatives. Well, you're both beautiful. How about that? Very beautiful. Very beautiful. Are well, you now, running hey, away from your hair? Yes, and that's Tracy. another thing. And it doesn't bother me. Are you running away from being the other Tracy Phillips? Not at all. In fact, I like oh. impersonating any Tracy Phillips on the planet. No, no, that's all right. Now, were you a member? <laughs> were you a member of the the Gladiators? Were you a um, a contestant on the Gladiators? No, no. Then you I've know never what? Been a Gladiator, but I love the movie Gladiator. Hold on one second. Out? Wait, wait a second. That's what it Here. says on the FanCast website. We just went on the FanCast website. It says <laughs> Tracy Phillips. What? <laughs> I, well, I work who are you? <laughs> What's that? I'm a, TV, I'm a TV critic for FanCast. It says here that you appeared in Dreamgirls. Were you in that? No. <laughs> no. Bedtime <laughs> Stories and American <laughs> Gladiators. You are making me sound much cooler than I really am. Cause I no, I'm telling you, we're looking at FanCast.com right I'm now. I'm TV for a living. <laughs> How long wow. have you been doing that? So uh, about ten years. Wow! It's a, okay. it's a pretty cool. It's a pretty cool professional job I have. Watching, if you like TV, TV getting paid All right. for it. All right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but um, uh, years ago, uh, you know, before you were born, I'm sure, um, <laughs> I won a couple of Emmys for Murphy Brown, and yeah. uh, there are a lot of gays watch that show. And then I was on a, a the number one radio station in LA at the time, a Power 106, which is a big. A lot of gays. I really always felt that there is this gay voting block, that this gay voting block that controls the Emmy voting. I mean that. Because I look at what won last I night. I've heard of the gay mafia voting block. I, I have to say. I don't know if it's true, but I, I, I have heard of it. <laughs> but what about Glee? When you watch Glee, do you think it is one of the best shows? I think Glee is fantastic. Uh, out of the two shows that were biggest that came out of last season, Glee and Modern Family were the ones that TV critics were most excited about. They both fulfilled their promise, and I think mm -hmm. they're both great. And uh, But it was good to see Modern Family win, win the Emmy for Best Comedy. This is a very tough question, my next one, Tracy. What was your next question? Are you a lesbian? Me? Yes. No. Do I lose points for that? No, no. Because I just had to check. That's all. <laughs> Because I'm gay. I don't know if you know that or not. <laughs> well, I'm incredibly gay. Do you like Glee? Yes. I like everything. I like it all. I like all of them. Uh, Anything with dancing. You can still like Glee and not be gay. Well, look at uh, Lynch uh, wins. Um, <laughs> now, here's another question. Nurse Jackie, uh, which yes. is an obvious ripoff of House. Why do they say that's a comedy? Now, I don't, you know what? Uh, you, uh, the cable is wonderful for one reason, I think. Like, I love Big Love, 
I loved um, the Tudors, and of course, years ago, the Sopranos and all. But oh, I'm great. not a fan of Hung, but Rodney likes Hung. Uh, certain people, they pick shows they like on the cable, and that's why they can survive, because they don't need 20, 30 million you know, viewers, right? Very right. specific. I have tried to watch Edie Falco, who I think is a great actress. She's either she doing great. blow, or she's going down on a guy in a back room. Then she comes home to her husband, who is oblivious, and I look at it and I go, what is funny about that show? Why do they keep saying it's a comedy? Even even Edie Falco, when she she won last night for Best Actress in Comedy, didn't know why she was, she said, I'm not funny. She admitted it right out. So we're not sure, but it's, you know, Showtime, they like to have their dark comedies. But that's their that's their hook, their, the edgy little, you know, the dark ones. So, you, but she, does, sure they... she does make you completely forget about Carmela Soprano. So props to Edie. Well, it does. And when she cut her hair really short. But that would make, <laughs> that would make, um, uh, what's Brian Cranston's uh, a show? Um, about that would make Breaking Bad a comedy. That would make because every time you see a drug dealer killed or whatever, you I guess you laugh. I don't I don't know I don't find her when she's doing the coke and she shoots up in the show. I, what's that's not what's funny about it. now is, is House House is a dramedy, right, Rodney? Right, House. Well, well no, House is a drama. A drama. I think, and Tracy... Uh, it's a drama with this, like. uh, Yeah, it's a drama with uh, comedic moments. Tracy, I'll just pose this to you as a question. Do you think Nurse, the people from Nurse Jackie set out to make a comedy, and it just isn't that funny? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey! Listen, Tracy. No, no, let her answer. Well, me. wait a second. You know how many shows I did that were supposed to be comedies that turned out not to be funny? Yeah. I think they set out to make a great show, and it's one of those ones because it's thirty. You know, it, it rides the line in a gray area, and you know, it is what it is. It, you wouldn't call like True Blood it. a comedy, but there's tons of comedic moments. Well, but it's got campy moments that make you yeah, laugh. But it's so. not a comedy. No, it's not a comedy. A little too yeah. gory to be a comedy. Did Al Pacino win because he's really good or because he just looked like death? Or because he's Al Pacino? <laughs> no, no, because he looked like Kevorkian. <laughs> he looked dead. <laughs> he, he himself he was, was it dead. Was, he was really great in it and had a really, really strong cast. It, it was, you know, I don't think a lot of people was check it, good? it out. but It yeah, was good. Well done. I think the thing that people, though, that should really check out that, was, that didn't uh, get a lot of viewers but that was excellent was Temple Grandin, um, which won a ton of awards. Jay loves that. I saw it. I saw it. More than the Pacific. And, is that a uh, miniseries? No, it was a. I was a. It was a. Was it? It was a movie. Yeah. 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 Claire Did Dean. You, what's your favorite show, Tracy? My don't, favorite and don't, show. Don't don't equivocate. Tell me your favorite what? show. Uh, one of my favorite shows ever. No, not one of them. Not one of them. Your favorite show. I can't. I. I, I Come I, on. I can't have just one. Yes, you can. Don't do that to me, Tracy. You tell me your favorite <laughs> show. Uh, on the air right now? Yes. Forever. I would say The Sopranos is probably... Yeah, they're not on the or, air. I'm talking about something on the air. Something that's on the air right now? Do you watch, right Mad, do you watch Mad Men? Well, I almost Mad had her saying it, Jay. True, in the summer, True Blood. Um, I'm watching Top Chef. Um, that one... Mad Men, Mad Men has nothing to do with anything... That you can relate to. It's about a. It's about fifty years ago. It's about life in America fifty yeah, so years ago. Yeah, but, I wasn't. But around and the the that. little seven year old girl was masturbating uh, last week. I'll, I turned it off. I'll never watch a show when they have a little kid masturbating. Why would they, Why would they have that? Why would they do that? They are approaching a lot of controversy. This why don't they have so. January Jones masturbating? Now I'm glued to that. <laughs> well, but I'm sure that they're taking notes. She's, she's been on their use this season, so I'm sure right. they've got something surprising coming for her character, too. Archie yeah, I, Punjabi. Sure, but they're really pushing the envelope, though. Archie Punjabi of The Good Wife. That was a big surprise upset. Who is that? She She's one of the supporting characters on The Good Wife. She won, she won an Emmy last night, too, and, one, and one of the nice surprises. Archie Punjabi. Her name's Archie? That's what it says. I love it. Yeah, she'll of have a, an interesting character. You know, her character is there's little gray areas as to her. It's, get, it's getting bigger well, now, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Now I, I know think, you're not I related think. to Bum Bum Phillips, but Jimmy Johnson, the football coach, uh, ex football coach of, of the Cowboys, uh, uh, Survivor in Nicaragua. Uh, that's yes. going to bring Survivor back. People are saying. I I think I think it will. Do you think he'll be worried about his hair? Yeah. Will that survive? How no, he, he cut it. He's going to survive. 
No, he cut the hair. Oh, because of Nurse Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He cut it just like Nurse Jackie. Uh, so that's a good one. What else is coming on? Uh, you know, I feel hey, What do you so think about True Blood this this season? Well, that's going to be, that's the summer show. That's going to be wrapping up. It's it's a lot of fun. But I think the three most anticipated fall shows coming, um, I would say, are the Hawaii Five O, which is a reboot of the 60s show, right. um, which is actually, plays like an action film. It's surprisingly well done. I think a lot of people well, are against you know, doing re- remakes, but I think you should give this one a chance because it was a lot of fun. And um, are they Are they just using the name and then doing their own show? Well, the, you know, the, the guy that's starring in Alex. Does he say Buckham Dano? He, um, is Buckham? he was the Moonlight Dano. Vampire. I think he he plays a little bit more like um he's almost like another Jack Bauer. He's very is Cam Fong is Chin Ho there. Dress and you know he's real serious and doesn't say much. So I think it's a definitely a different uh, different vibe than the original one people are used to. Have you watched Shit My Dad Says? I, I have, and and it's it's as bad as the title implies. I, I think that, you know, when you go beyond 140 characters, it becomes less entertaining. I love William Shatner, but the, the show is just really crappy. It's awful. Okay. So, shit I my dad. I think that's going to be the biggest bomb of the season. I think um, Outsourced is in a little bit of trouble. That's, uh, you know, The Office goes to India. Um, you know, that's not such a good Wait trip. a minute. The um, Office goes to India. Is it based I mean, on those how commercials? Would, that's how you would describe it. It's a guy, who, an American, who goes to India to run a call center uh, for a small company in India. So, I don't know who thought that would be a, a fun idea. But. Yeah, but be, it's because of those funny commercials, right? With the, maybe, the Indian guys? Maybe. Yeah. I could, you know, you those never are well know. Received. Sometimes things are surprising. But I, I would think the big, uh, the biggest gamble is NBC's The Event. I don't know if you guys like those high concept serialized shows. I, don't, like I really Netflix don't know what that is. What is it? What is it? What's it about? It's a, it's a, it's a show. It's a big mystery um, on NBC where um, you know they, they start to unravel a, a global conspiracy. It's like a conspiracy thriller, and it's one of those ones where you only learn certain things through each episode. So you know, I've if it lost. gets canceled, everyone's screwed. But <laughs> so it's a big gamble. But um, they have a good twist in the pilot. I think people should at least check out the first episode and give it a try. AMC will have zombies. They're not calling them vampires. They're calling them zombies. They are zombies. Zombies are the new vampires. Now, what do zombies eat? What now, The vampire needs blood. Werewolves actually kill people, eat the meat. What is a, vo- they, a zombie? How does a zombie right. stay alive? They're, they're flesh-eating animal they eat, monsters. They, you know. Oh, they, they do brains, eat brains, though, isn't it? They eat yeah. brains. Okay. Brains All right. I love brains. People and, you know. Well, what, Tracy, what's that show about? They're the, undead, they're the walking undead. Zombies. Show, yeah, but what's it about? Does a zombie the walk, have a girlfriend? The or? Dead, it's, it's a popular comic book that AMC is, is bringing into TV show. Um, and it premieres on Halloween night. So, is you know, it zombies who try, to, who try to get into Take over uh, real world. life? Hold it. No, but do they assimilate into the human Hold world? On. Hold on. No, no. Or isn't, no, it, isn't it about like humans have taught zombies how to do menial labor, isn't it? Hold on. <laughs> I'm coming at I'm it. I'm serious. But I'm walking at you as a zombie. He looked just like you. It's <laughs> well, weird. You, no, but you can run away from me. That's the thing about a no. zombie. Watch this. Look. And they, mul- this they is... multiply very quickly. Yeah, this is radio, Jay. You mean, wait a minute. The zombies have sex? Mm, I, I don't know, but I'm sure. No, when they kill people, then you become a zombie. Yeah. And... Oh, because they don't want to wait nine months for a little baby zombie to come. And the zombies zomb- are fast zombies now, are too. Not- Zombies are, zombies are fast now. Vampires. All right. I think there's a lot less sex okay, than the hold on. Than, than Isn't the concept of the show that humans have taught right, zombies how this. to be slaves, you basically? You ready? <laughs> Seriously. What? See how fast I got to you? Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> so you looked like you were in the truck already. <laughs> are you guys right. excited for Boardwalk Empire 2? No. No. No? They just no, moved the Sopranos to a different city. I like uh, Steve Buscemi. He's a great guy. But I think that the Sopranos did it, said it, yeah, and it's on. done. What are you going to do? Yeah. I think it's done. Gangster, gangsters never, gangster stories never really get old, though. Well, the no, final one nice. is uh, Conan O'Brien, uh, who should not have gone to the Emmys last night, in my opinion, but he did. Um, John Stewart wins for what the tenth, doing? tenth time. John Stewart should have had Conan O'Brien except for him. Uh, and, and that would have been funny. But the thing okay. is, is that the producer of the, of the Daily Show, uh, a woman said, said, uh, what did she say exactly? She said, it's hard to feel bad. He said he, we that, he was so in, hard. He, that he was in bed. John Stewart was in bed already. Yeah. Yeah, that he, he, you know, he had so many Emmys he didn't need to show up. She was joking, of course, but. 
She also said, it's hard to feel bad or badly because we work so hard. Like what? The other shows don't work hard? Like, you know. Yeah, that was probably not. That was probably a backhanded insult. She probably really was. regret today. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, go to FanCast and. Um, Tracy Phillips is there, but don't believe anything you read about her. She's not that person. Yeah. Uh, she's the other person. You need to clean that up. I'm, I mean it. Because what does regator I, mean? <laughs> I will tell someone immediately. Someone will be fired. <laughs> Fancast.com and uh, Tracy Phillips, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. Thank you. I'm friending you on Facebook, by the way. Now, I have to tell you something. i got to tell you something. If you go online, she is the same person. I got an interview with I, her with the same picture. I think I do, that picture is of the girl that Rodney interviewed. No. Then there's the picture that we that we have. Oh, you think it's just a complete mess up. Yeah, I think everything that comes up for Tracy Phillips is the other chick. So Bum Phillips' daughter is the burlesque girl? Yeah. So you mean when I... And like, I'm gonna be but a, I can find Tracy Phillips the television critic i can i can find her articles i'm gonna be in new orleans she has a blog i'm gonna be in new orleans at harris uh september the 17th i believe whatever that saturday night is and i'm pretty sure that this tracy phillips not this one but tracy phillips is going to be there because she's been her other ones this woman has a knockout by the way burlesque is so much fun because it's sexy but they do an elaborate dance and it's funny and everything else and i've been hosting these things for years i had no idea that that was bum phillips's granddaughter and uh wade phillips's daughter i mean she's um she's kind of built like she's big you know she's not a she's not big she's normal i fucking hate that she's big no she isn't she is a perfectly shaped woman right. and everything short of that is skinny ass ugly you know what? This I mean, is a guy I, 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 that, by I, the way, when a woman... Me. When it a, seconds me that men, such as yourself, look at a skinny woman and say, that's normal. I didn't say skinny. Well, you called her fat. She's got big, thick legs, she like a football player. Oh, Jesus. I can't take it. You want a woman that when she takes her clothes off, there's so much hair down there, she ought to be wearing an Abraham Lincoln hat down there. Could you say that again, but slower? An Abraham times. Lincoln hat down there. So... What? what? This woman wasn't lying to us, was she? I'm trying to determine that because I. Garrett, do you think she was lying to us? No. Yeah, she probably. And so she, her life is screwed up because she's got somebody else's name, and every time you go online or do something, because all the information that you found, Garrett, it came up that it was Wade Phillips' daughter, right? Yes. Oh, like the girl we had on the phone sounded like she craved attention. And the girl in the picture looks like she gets all the attention she needs. You could just tell that by the still photograph. Yes. You are going to be a part of my new advice show. Yes. Where people will send in a photograph, and Garrett Andritz will be able to tell whether you crave attention <laughs> Garrett, you or you're she, okay. Garrett, you think she has daddy issues? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what. If you can, is there some way that a listener could send a picture to you somehow? Uh, could you sure, get a picture? jthomasshow at gmail.com. Send us a picture at jthomasshow at gmail.com, and Garrett will decide whether this person needs attention or is okay. You can send it in knowing the person, and then you will call us, and we'll see if you're correct. Eric Ryan is a big listener to the show. Uh, Jay, I drove 38 fucking, 3,800 fucking miles in a U-Haul on an alleged vacation to take my daughter's shit out to the University of Utah. The U-Haul truck had no satellite radio. During the trip, I could not figure out what was worse, not hearing you on Sirius for three hours a day or listening to you on Sirius for three hours a day. I don't understand that. Why? Why not? That doesn't. That doesn't make me feel good. That's awful. Just awful. Um, you had the potato people on. You talked about a potato gun the other day. What did we have on the potato museum? What did we have, Garrett? Something. Potato days. Potato days. Mm -hmm. There was a show on G Four, the network called F in Science. They challenged a potato gun versus a regular bullet being shot at a dummy wearing a bulletproof vest. 
the potato tore the entire upper body off of the dummy. The bullet only did minimal damage. It's on YouTube if you want to see it. But that makes sense. Yeah. The, the potato has more mass. A lot more. From a potato gun? How would you get the kind of Which would you rather get hit by, a bullet or a baseball bat? A baseball bat, I would Fuck live. No, no I'd rather, way rather get hit by a bullet. Bullet goes through, you put your hand over the wound. Baseball bat, fucking, are you kidding me? What are you, high? No, but the bullet will go into you and kill you. The baseball bat will mess your face up or whatever, or break your ribs. It's not going to kill right. you. Right, it'll do more damage. No, the bullet kills you. Yeah, but that's just consequential by the where it hits. I'm talking about the yeah, amount the of damage Yeah, the bullet doesn't does. kill you, the hole does. Yeah. You go. It doesn't. You, you know what? It really is. It's like idiots. A bullet doesn't kill you. It's if like it goes, idiots at a bar. It hey, really is. It's does a idiots. bullet kill you if it goes through your arm? I don't know. Yes, it can. Through your arm? It certainly can well, hit it an artery. a lot of blood. You could, but does it kill you? Do you die? I'm going to say it again. Shoot me. Don't shoot me. Hit me with a baseball bat. That's oh, what man. I would rather. Whew. Hold Crazy. on. Where's the bat? Where's the bat? It's not in here. I have you. Would you rather get shot in the shin or <laughs> knock something on your shin? Knock something on my shin. Ah, you're crazy. Well, of course, you're Christina. Every time. I'm correct, right, Christina? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Hmm? Bullet this goes time. right through you. Little this hole. Time. Hey, Sandy scalp. Um, <laughs> that hmm. is not right. I'm biting my tongue. You had somebody on from Jim Thorpe. Pennsylvania the other day, Jay. This comes from Hatley. Um, you've done a disservice to Jim Thorpe. You failed to mention that he was the first man to win both the pentathlon and the decathlon. One is five events, one is ten. Uh, thus, the etymological uh, pen. Hey, Garrett, why don't you jump right in Jay's shit for that? Etymological. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I don't really appreciate it when people do it to me. So Greek etymology. To others, you know. Greek etymology. Pen means five and deck means ten. In the single Olympics, when you consider his Olympic glory was a phenomenal record, then football, baseball, and basketball, and don't forget lacrosse, which all Indians are very good at. I think it goes without saying that Jim Thorpe is the greatest athlete of the 20th century. I agree with that. I absolutely agree with that. I believe that there has never been an athlete as great as Jim Thorpe and never will be. And I think if he lived in modern times, he was a huge guy. By the way, Jay, you were incorrect. His Olympic medals that were stripped were reinstated. Of course, he was dead doesn't make any difference. It's like when they give, you know, some sort of um, award to somebody after they're dead. I'm sorry. I, I just, for, for what? You got to give the awards when they're alive. You, you can't, you know, give somebody, you know, like they pardon them after they're dead. Jesus. Christina is worth her weight in gold. Well, that would be a lot of gold. I can tell you that. Why is it pick on Christina Day? I'm ill. Wally, Scranton, Pennsylvania. Have you ever made a potato gun, Wally of Scranton? Oh, yeah. I made one like 10 years ago. I still have it on a PVC pipe. You take the big PVC pipe that has the little pipe coming out, and you put a little pipe in there, and you put a gas grill clicker and a cap and a screw on the other end, and you spray ether in there. And the whole trick is you got to get the potato to fit in there tight. That's all that's, you know, it's really good. <laughs> I shot it over a million square ho- uh, foot warehouse up in Pennsylvania. I put a lemon inside of it. It fucking thing went sailing to the moon. If you ever hit somebody point blank range with it, they blow their fucking head off. <laughs> you shot a, a lemon out of a potato gun. Yeah, well, see, the lemon, you, we had to get a lemon to fit in there so you didn't squeeze it and get the juice out of it. It wasn't squishy. You had to get it in there so it was still hard. We want to make one that shoots golf balls, but we're afraid somebody will definitely fucking oh. die if we do that. By the way, I was hit by a golf ball, but that had gone high in the air, not a straight shot. And when oh, it yeah. landed on top of my head, and I mean this, 
In the cartoons, you know, when the cartoon character gets hit and his head turns into a bell and it goes, that is exactly what happened. And there were about 30 seconds there, and I mean it, that I didn't know if I was going to live or die. Uh, So if it had hit me with the force that you're, even if the drive had hit me solid, you know, it actually had gone up in the air, was on its way down when it struck me. Um, The golf ball will kill somebody. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. That's made to fly. I mean, let's face it. Lemons oh, my God. It'll kill you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, when I was in that, um, uh, you know, I don't know if you've been listening to the show long enough, but I was doing this horrible movie where I was uh, terribly injured and took the 40 stitches in my eye. There is that moment that you, I mean, you don't know whether you're going to live or die, and you don't give a shit. You just don't know whether you're going to stay with the group or you're going to be gone. <laughs> it's the oddest thing when you come close to passing out or death. The other night we were at a party. Now this is this is you're, this sounds like a lie, but I can call my wife and, and she'll verify this. We're at this party. Now I happen to be the only straight guy to get this gay guy's birthday party, and uh, they were all dressed in wigs and all acting really ridiculous. A bunch of old 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 gay men, and um, I was bouncing around there with my wife and all, and so a woman faints dead away, and. And so they pick her up and they wake her up, you know. She didn't know that she'd fainted. And apparently she's been doing this for years. It's something to do with the sugar and alcohol or something like that when she drinks. And she wakes up and she goes, what happened? Isn't that weird? We're so frightened of death, yet when you pass out or you get hit in the head, you don't know what happened. You have no idea. None whatsoever. So oh, that's what, what that's what it reminds Have you ever been knocked out ever? Mm, yeah, I got knocked out on a motocross bike when I smacked my head off of the, the, the handlebars coming off a jump one time. I if you off. hadn't awakened, would you know what happened? If, no, I don't remember what the fuck happened. I just remember waking up and my bike was laying there and I was laying on the ground. I just thought, oh, fuck, I must have wrecked. <laughs> and so that was that. If you'd have died, you wouldn't have known, would you? No, I wouldn't have known. It's like what you were saying before about dying. Like, I want a hand job, but if I die, if I die and some hot frog gives me the hand job, what's the fucking thing? Well, at the party I was at, if I'd have fainted, I'd have woken up and there'd have been four men on top of me. <laughs> you don't want to faint at a gay birthday party, I can tell you that right now. No, no, that'd be the last place I'd want to be. Yeah. The fuck and out. I was wearing a fishnet outfit, too, which is also embarrassing. So. Oh, yeah. Well, shit. You are well, look, Wally, thank you very much. The man, right. Wally, has made a potato gun that shoots delicious, ripe lemons over a one million square foot uh, building. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I went out of my way to buy the People magazine article about Elon uh, Norgrenson. Um, <laughs> what? Really? What? Okay, you know what? <laughs> if I'm going to be hit with my own shit, what are you laughing at? You couldn't pronounce her name. Norgrinson. Yeah. There was, there's saliva on your T-shirt. Norgrinson, I said. I don't think there's a sun in it. Isn't it Nordegren? Good job. Yeah, Derek got it. Thank you. All right. Elon Nordegren. I, I bought the People magazine, which, by the way, is sold out around the world. Um, rumor has it she got $10 million for the interview. And in it, they say stuff to her like, well, now you're one of the richest women, certainly in Sweden or wherever the hell it is, and certainly in that, that complex where she lived. And she said, you know, the money doesn't mean anything to me, she said. Um, and I just am glad that my children are okay. And then she said in this interview, yes, it's nice to have the plane. That's what she said. (laughs) She said that. It's nice to have the plane and the yacht and to be able to go anywhere in the world I want to at any moment in time. But I'm really interested in women's issues. I swear to God, I'm reading this thing. She's about 29 years old, right? I was on her side until all this. I mean, what, what do you, Rodney, really, what do you really think? I think she uh, was paid a lot of money mm-hmm. for nothing. Well, it's not a good interview. 19 hours over four visits. 
And she says, she, she said, the idea that I would have used a golf club to hit Tiger Woods is totally ridiculous. Oh, really? What were you doing with that golf club? I believe the police and the neighbors say that they saw her wielding the club. She says she And was, then he had marks yeah. all over his face. Yes. Uh, you know. She's as full of shit as his caddy. You know what's weird? I would respect her more if she hit him. Now, the reason why I know she did hit him is because the Swedish golfer, whose wife is her close friend, said that she should have used a driver. Remember that? So she used a nine iron, and she should have used a uh, a driver. Passengers on that JetBlue flight are claiming, allegedly, that Stephen Slater is lying. You know the guy that went out of the... He's lying. They can't seem to find this woman, um, you know, who who pissed him off. And apparently he had this horrible gash on his head. Have we heard any more about that? By the way, during the flight, somebody offered him an Elmo Band-Aid. And he would not take it. Blood was dripping down his eyebrow. Uh, a businessman who says he would rather remain anonymous said... It was quite a gash, and I thought that it should have been contained because it was unsanitary. It's the first time he's had a gash on his head. <laughs> <laughs> Steve. Slater's attorney, Howard Terman, has insisted that Slater was smashed by a storage bin door or a piece of luggage trying to help a passenger who then cursed him. Uh, Damn you! <laughs> the JetBlue people say they've questioned about 70% of the people on the flight, and none of them have corroborated Mr. Slater's version of events. Does JetBlue charge you extra for the live show? I don't know. But isn't that weird that that they think maybe he just kind of... He snapped. He's <laughs> he say it again. Only, he did. He say snapped. <laughs> this guy snapped. His, his, did you see the interview with his ex-wife? He's got ex not a dozen of an ex-wife. The ex-wife, yeah. yeah, he has an ex-wife and kids. <laughs> did you see his gay, uh, his gay lover yelling at the press because he's got medical conditions and they're upsetting him? Yeah, his his ex-wife went on Good Morning America, some crap, talking about him and how he fantasized for years of of quote unquote using the shoot, and I about fell off the fucking couch. <laughs> And I said, ma'am, you have got that right. And he finally did. <laughs> you mean the poop and sheet? on his uh, <laughs> Facebook page, the only book was like some AA book. So everyone just assumes that he might have broken his promise. Issues. Yeah, and kind of... Stuck. Broken one of his steps. Well, but if he grabbed a beer on the way out, yeah. then I'm sure he's... He, yeah, he used before. the emergency exit with the slide and everything. <laughs> it's such a way to go. Good God. I don't care if it's true or false. I mean, what a way to go. That's a great story. How You think he made... What was the noise he made when he went down that slide? Do you think he did one of those? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paris Hilton has been arrested for cocaine possession. She's got enough money to have somebody that she can hire to hold the drugs. Am I right? Well, yeah. her limo was pulled over. The cop smelled pot coming out of the limo. When she got out, now this is the truth, she went into her bag to get her lip gloss and the <laughs> and the bindle of coke. They use the term bindle. The bindle of cocaine. Not her driver's license. She wasn't driving. The bindle of cocaine flipped out of her purse and fell on the ground. The cop picked it up, opened it up. There was coke in it. Um, there, you know, they could smell the pot. They arrested her and she spent, I guess, eight hours or whatever. Now, you know, I mean, look, coke's against the law and I know she was partying. I don't know why they stopped the limo. I have no idea. But they did it. Also, Lindsay Lohan says she is ready to go undergo a Britney Spears life transformation to get her career back on track. She's hired some no nonsense businesswoman who is going to put her on a, um, I guess a, uh, what do you call it? Like a, like a allowance, right? 
clubs in Los Angeles and Las Vegas two days after she's out of rehab, she was offered $150 per party to host these parties at clubs and casinos. $150,000. Uh, yeah. $150,000. Why wouldn't she just host it and not drink? Because... I mean... Why not? Well, to be associated with it in general in the media, they'll make something up. So, so if she's what? not so, drinking, they'll make it up that she is, and she just, I guess, doesn't want that right now. She could have made uh, three, four $400,000 in a weekend. Yeah, but she's going to make twice that when she d- gives her tell-all to people. And, you know, I think she's I got plenty of stuff coming up where she's going to be just fine. Well, I don't know. I, You know, uh, I, I think that... Um, I, I heard when she got out of jail, did you hear this, that a couple of hotels put on extra bartenders? Yeah. <laughs> whole city of Chicago, I think. They did the whole thing. Um, do you watch Cake Boss? Not Anime. really. I do. Nobody watches Sometimes. it? Sometimes. Cake Boss star Buddy. Uh, hold on, Jim. Ba- hold on, Jim. Mm-hmm. Cake. Gary, cake. you watch Cake Boss sometimes? When I'm, you know, looking through the guide, nothing's on. Garrett's I'll, I'll a gourmet it. chef. You guys you chef. have no idea what he kind makes of collard I get here at the studio. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's a treater. He's a missing out. And by no, the way, me... you should make something else because it's a full week now. <laughs> hey, you know what, Christina? <laughs> Best way to a woman's heart is through her large ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jay. <laughs> you know? And I mean cake. I don't mean anything else. Not through her brittle hair? <laughs> no. Go ahead. Just keep loading it on. It's a mess up there. <laughs> 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 Buddy Velastro is in jail. Uh, the brother-in-law, of Buddy Velastro, excuse me, not Buddy the, the star. I apologize. Remy Gonzalez. That sounds. Like, they just sound Remy. like. They sound like. A, <laughs> he had been on the TLC show with his brother-in-law, Buddy, but now he's uh, nobody will post his three hundred thousand dollar bail, so they've left him in jail. Gonzalez is a cake decorator at the Velastro's family's. Carlos City Hall Bake Shop. What town is this in? Is it like on the border there of uh, Arizona and Mexico? Where do these people call home? I think he's from the Northeast, either New York or Boston. The arrest affidavit claims that Gonzalez, the brother-in-law of Buddy Velastro of Cake Boss, had sex with a minor who was between the ages of 13 and 16. He is married with a child. Um, Gonzalez uh, is accused of sexually abusing a 14-year-old girl. That's what it says here. There are witnesses to the abuse. How do you... Wait a minute. How do you have a witness? Gonzalez told one witness he had made a mistake. Oops. And wanted to forget about it. Well, of course, he'd already come. (laughs) Right. Let's forget about it. <laughs> um, the people at TLC, we support Buddy oh. and the Velastro family during this very difficult and challenging time. Well, of course, you do. The show's a hit for Yeah, you. that's one. Probably their most popular show. Yeah, absolutely. Didn't it win an Emmy? Uh, no, something else. Yeah. Did it? Did it? Did it win an Emmy, or Garrett, or was it just know. nominated? I don't know. Um, Mike Crimmins says, Jay, why didn't you talk about the Cincinnati woman who was masturbating with a sex toy we did. and watching a porno? No, I never did talk about oh. it while driving. I, you and I did. You know what? I figured everybody else must have talked about it, right, Garrett? I guess every morning show had to talk about this. Yeah. Calandra Hamilton. You know, they had excellent pictures of that, actual pictures. Of her doing this? Well, Yeah. You're telling me she was also using her cell phone? (laughs) She was masturbating, watching a video. And driving. Oh, my God. That's amazing. So she had a friend with her running the video. She had somebody sitting in the passenger seat. Holding a laptop or something? Yeah. I got to tell you. It's not like the gal. That's a moving violation. It's it's not like the gal that married good old dad, right? Wasn't was that was that old song? Jesus. Um, Jim Furyk, who was favored to win that tournament over the weekend, <laughs> his alarm clock didn't go off. Yes. His cell phone battery went dead. He missed the pro am 
No, he was late, seven minutes. Seven minutes late. And they want to change the rules now. But under the rules, if you miss the Pro-Am tea time... Uh, do you know you, why they do that, that rule was put in? Why? Because the pros were taking the Pro-Ams so... They were being so cavalier about mm-hmm. the Pro-Ams. And they weren't showing up, and they were goofing, and da da da. And finally, the sponsors and the, of course, the AMs, which pay a lot of mo- who pay a lot of money to mm-hmm. play with the pros and get on TV. I've and, been one uh, of those. Which an AM or a pro? I've been an AM. Uh, of course, they take it very seriously. Cost them a lot of money. Ten so, grand yeah. sometimes yeah, yeah. Uh, to play the game. Yeah. So that's why they said, "Look, if you're late for your tea time, it's going to affect your professional career." He screwed up. I mean, it's I'll, terrible. I'll, I'll tell you one thing: we do know. What? He'll never be late again. So you believe in that rule? Of course. Even though his battery went dead? Hey, you show up any time for your tea time? No. Well, then what's the rule? Well, Tiger did fuck all night long and still did never miss a pro. I'm I'm just just asking asking you, if you don't believe in that rule, what is should the rule be? Well, I mean, I think if you have a really good excuse. (laughs) Like anybody can't make up an excuse. My alarm didn't go off. Right. What, my dog ate it? I don't know. Uh, exterminators have been called to every major building in lower Manhattan. The bed bugs, apparently, Garrett and Christina, they're, they've literally moved toward the end of the island. Now, they have dogs that are sniffing mm-hmm. cabinets. It's, uh, we don't, uh, now we're in Midtown. In, Why don't they tent? I'm Jay. This terrifies me. I lay in bed worrying about this every night because it has nothing to do with cleanliness. It's just it, mm-hmm. it spreads. World, it spreads. It says here that the bugs are especially uh, attracted to dry I hate hair, <sighs> hair and scalp. Um, they are going to begin treating movie that theaters. Joke was over. <laughs> they're going to yeah, be- Jay. <laughs> they're what happened to moving on. <laughs> yeah, they're going to start treating movie theaters because they now yeah, Times Square. Yep. Now that's juice that they shoot in there is dangerous as hell. You know, bed bugs actually make a Ben Affleck movie better. Do you know where else there were bed bugs, Jay? In CNN. What? They had yeah, to they close did. down an L magazine because, and because of that Urban uh, Outfit um, or because of that Christian Amapur. That's why. can I tell you something else. There's a bigger scandal than that. They're about to open a bed bug church near Ground Zero. That's where the bed bugs would go. You know, Rodney, you're not the only funny one around here. I can think of things, too. There's Garrett and Christine. <laughs> nah. <laughs> All right. See, get it? The bed bug church. It's part of the, you know, the Islamic thing. See? Yes. That's, where that, that's how that would go. What God do they look up to? Hmm? Oh, I know which one. Ready? Wait! Bow, 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 bow. Uh, coming up in a few minutes, um, another holiday road that had been postponed before, right, Gary? But is it part of the contest, the one that's it coming up? It is not. I think it's uh, one of your selections. One of my selections. These are the people that have decided to build a castle just like they were built back in uh, medieval times. What would that be century. like? The 1200s, right? Yeah. It always threw me why it would be the 13th century, but it would be the 1200s. That always threw that me. Too, yeah. I did, too. If it's the 1300s, then that would be the 13th century. You know what I mean? We were uh, supposed to have these guys on two weeks ago when Mm -hmm. Bobby Slayton and Kevin Meany were here. Oh, and it was too crazy, right? Yeah, we kept pushing them back. Well, yes, those two. They were at each other. Uh, Jamie Rash. Jay, I'm heading for New Orleans for the weekend for my first anniversary. My father told me you were from New Orleans. Uh, Any suggestions of places to eat, to see, to drink? I found plenty of things online, um, but I figured there were these little known places that might be worth checking out. Well, well, well. You know, before I uh, answer this question for you, and I'm and, and and I you know have an active home there, and my whole family is there. When when I watched the five year anniversary of the tragedy of Katrina, and when I watched you know the second. Uh, 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 Spike, um, Spike Lee movie, right? I, I'm gonna say this again. 
New Orleans is not just the Ninth Ward. It is not. It is, I mean, I don't know what they're doing. They've got to stop it. They've absolutely, a friend of mine um, went up when um, Anderson Cooper was doing something a couple of years ago and actually shouted into the microphone, what are you doing? Why don't you come to my working class neighborhood or why don't you go to one of the wealthy neighborhoods that were destroyed or go uptown or whatever and stop with the Ninth Ward? Look, it was a shithole before the storm. You would go to the Ninth Ward and the odds of getting out of there alive six years ago. I'm when I what you said, what do you mean by that? You couldn't drive through the Ninth Ward. You, you get killed. Um, you could go to some bars and restaurants and stuff, but you would, you would get your fucking throat slit. Are you nuts? The thing gets blown away. By the way, Brad Pitt and his wife, they built about four houses. They're in the middle of nowhere. They're these interesting architectural things in the middle of nowhere. There is a whole group of individuals, white and black, I might add, from Lakeview, where the houses are still all, that's where I was raised, where my mother's house was destroyed. And, and they never take the cameras there, ever. And then, yes, oh, God forbid, some wealthy people lost their homes. You know, John Goodman lost this gorgeous, uh, fishing camp that had no insurance, no nothing, lost the land and everything. There's no land left. The water went over. You know, it is just really odd to me. They are focusing on, and, and by the way, a billion dollars was given to people to rebuild their homes, okay? And some huge amount of it, over half of it, never got used. Why not? They went to the goddamn casino. They gave it to their cousin or their uncle or some shit. That is the the thing as a New Orleanian that is pissing me off and I'm sick of seeing it. So the next time you're sitting down watching TV, you hit somebody and go, you know what? New Orleans is a lot more than what we're seeing on television. Okay? Come into my neighborhood. People got money. They fixed their houses and life went on. And there was no racial thing. I went in there and applied for my money when my roof blew off just like everybody else. Okay? Everybody was in there. The casino profit went up 25% after those checks went out. And I told them, don't just give these money to people. Don't just give it to them. Make them show you that you built something or put the, you got a young person never had more than $200 in their lives and they put $50,000 in their checking account. They just put it in there. Are you kidding? Their cousin, their uncle, their scumbag family was, it was like they won the goddamn lottery. I'll tell you a great place to eat. Okay, um, uh, if you're going to New Orleans, my buddy Jack owns J- Giacomo's, like the, what's I think it's from a song. I believe it's from Jacques IMO. I believe it's from a song. Um, it's on Oak Street. And you, and you hear music there at the Maple Leaf is great. T. Patina's is great. Go for a drink at the Columns Hotel where they shot a movie called Pretty Baby years ago with Brooke Shields. Um, the quarter is actually cool, but you don't want to go on Bourbon Street. I mean, you can, you can walk up and down Bourbon Street, but, you know, it's every scumbag in the world is going to be there, okay? So you want to go off, you know, Bourbon Street, and you, you can't really mess up too badly in uh, in New Orleans. If you, if you want to go to strip clubs and all that, that's all available, but just hang out in the French Quarter. The greatest hamburger in the world is called Portacol on Esplanade. It went, it went fabulous. But I will tell you, Garrett was asking me, yeah, people got from 50000 to 150000 to rebuild their homes if they had a little bit of sure and not enough. And thousands of people were given the money. Or you could sell your house or your lot to the state, right? I'm telling you, they got hundreds of millions of dollars and they pissed it away because... They have a culture of pissing it away. And Spike Lee and Anderson Cooper, I'm telling you, stay out of New Orleans. We're better without you. Okay? 
and they're living places where they are forced to go to school, they can't get on the welfare thing, and so they want to go back to New Orleans and what? Fuck it up for us again? Stay the hell out of there. We don't need you. Brooke Shields, uh, who I mentioned who was on this, uh, you know, she was 12 years old and her mother was basically prostituting her out. Um, and she did this movie, Pretty Baby, where she was the daughter of the prostitute at the Columns Hotel in New Orleans, uh, which is a great bar, by the way. Um, she's in rehearsals for a musical called Leap of Faith in Los Angeles. And... <clears throat> There's good news and bad news. What What do you want first? Good. Brooke Shields. The good news? Yeah. She broke her hand. Wow, then what's the bad news? She's still going to perform. The bad news. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I mean, really. Rodney, would you go see a musical with Brooke Shields? I would. All right, well, I'm wrong about that. 21-year-old... Julius Threats, S T H R E A T S. That's Threats, isn't it? Yeah. Twenty mm-hmm. one year old Julius Threats has been impersonating a fourteen year old boy boy, and he has been the star of his Tampa Youth Football League. He, <laughs> he looks young, but he's a good athlete. He has been running all over these kids for the town and country Packers. Uh, they have arrested him as he was trying to check in to the junior high school. He enrolled as a 14-year-old at the junior high school. He's 5'11", 160, 10 pounds under the 170 league limit, and he's in the Hillsborough County Jail. They got him for trespassing. That's all they could get him for, and a burglary, uh, something or other. But he was 21. You know, I will tell you, if I could have gotten away with it, that would have been fun, though, to be like 22 years old and go back and play youth football. God! Because, you know, you're so confident, you know, and you just run over guys and, damn it. You know. So, anyway. You're thinking about the locker room, aren't you? (laughs) Yeah, I am right now. Did he do it just to play football? No, actually, the way they caught him was he had he had more hair in his genitals than anybody else in the in the shower. They knew something on his back. They knew something was up. <laughs> they knew it was up there. Now was he banging the high school girls? No, he didn't get accused of I any of that. Know. No. Uh, well, wait a minute. That no, guy. You're going to tell me the star of the football team was not getting laid. He had, he hadn't gotten into junior high school yet. That oh. was next on the agenda. By the way, the producers. Mean, did he, did hmm? he run over people or not? Oh, he did. He was fantastic. Well, then you're going to tell me that he wasn't getting laid as the star of the high school? He had just played a game, one game. One game. And then he was enrolling in the junior high to prove he was a new guy in town, right? Okay. So the one game he played was in high school or junior high? Well, junior league, but you're a junior high student. There's no more junior high football. So it's youth football, but they're they're up to 14, right? Then they jump to high school after that. Like, like there's... Junior highs don't have football teams anymore. They have the kids are allowed to play from eleven to fourteen, right? You played junior high football, so did I. They not many of them have an organized team anymore. So you you go I don't to see what this has to do with him getting laid. He hadn't started yet. He had just gotten this idea a couple he of weeks a ago. Game. He did. There's nobody to screw yet. No, there's nobody to screw yet. The cheerleaders, you think? He was getting ready. How about that basketball player that was twenty one? And was playing in, I believe, Texas, right? And a team from Florida happens to come to town to play in some tournament. The guy goes, "His brother knows him or something." Yeah, that's hey, that yeah, guy's twenty seven years about, old. Yeah. That's where it is. <laughs> he screwed a sixteen year old girl, and he is going to jail for that. So that you're right. The producers of How I Met Your Mother are planning a spinoff. <laughs> How I Met Your Mother's Boyfriend. <laughs> How I kept it from your mother that I have yeah. no interest in women. Yeah. Uh, I have no idea who they'd spin off out of that show. But I cannot watch a show where an avowed gay guy is pretending that he's the guy's father. I, I just, I, I just, I cannot suspend that. What about Cary Grant? I don't think Cary Grant was gay. 
What? I do not. He's infamous for being gay. No, he was not. He How do you was. say that? He had a roommate. So you're in denial. He had a male roommate. That's nothing wrong with You and I lived together. We What's were roommates. What's to do with us being gay? Well, we, we, we were roommates. He admitted being gay. No, he didn't. He's one of my favorite actors. Don't I'd rather not turn go your cat butt to me. It says on Wikipedia that he and some guy, Scott, last name Scott. Wait a second. Randolph Scott was a famous cowboy. Randolph Scott. And Randolph Scott retired from acting because they did not allow actors at the Los Angeles Country Club. No Jews, no blacks, no Hispanics, no actors, right? He loved golf. He was like a pro. He retired from acting so he could join the Los Angeles Country Club. Does that sound gay to you? Who said he was gay? Scott that was his he roommate. And Scott lived together as a gay couple, said no. Alexander Darcy, who no. worked with him on the No, the the Alexander Darcy. I think alone. Carrie knew that people were saying things about him. I don't think he tried to hide it. The two it's men not. frequently accompanied, accompanied, <laughs> accompanied <laughs> each other to parties oh. and premieres. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Un- they, wait a minute. He was, I'm sorry, he, he Garrett. He was mercilessly gay. Garrett, I'm sorry. What did they do? <laughs> accompanied. Good. Accompanied. There we it. go. And were unconcerned when photographs of them cozily preparing dinner together at home were published. Someone the other day asked me, what is the difference between Sirius XM and terrestrial radio? You just heard it. <laughs> on terrestrial radio, as soon as this show is over, somebody's not going to be on the air the next day. Okay? Somebody's gone. Uh, let's go to Jake of Florida. It's the Jay Thomas Show. By the way, the medieval fortress builders from the Ozarks are coming up. <laughs> That's even hard for me to act like I'm like. Uh, I mean, I know it's my guess, but this is, this might be a rough one. Uh, yes, Jacob, Florida, go ahead. Hey, Jay, uh, I want to know what's what's going to happen with your show. Is your show tied in with like the uh, bigger, you know, the contract signing of uh, re-signing How? Howard and all? No, that? no, no, no. My show is not tied to that. Not at all. In fact, do you, you remember when when Judas when uh, Christ said to Judas. Yeah, I remember that. You will deny... And who did he say? Not to Judas. You will deny me three times before the cock crows or whatever. Peter. Peter, yeah. You will deny me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you'll see. You'll see what kind of what kind of low life I am if they ever, you know, question me about that. You know what I mean? I'll turn, <laughs> it, Mr. I'll turn against him. Mr. Thomas, did you know uh, the recently... Uh, hmm? What? Did no. you know Mr. Stern at all? No, I had never met the man. I'll ask you once again. Did you know Howard Stern? I think nothing of the For man. The third time. Did you know <laughs> Howard Stern? I think it's a great decision. He's no longer with our great company. Oh, yeah. I'm one of those. I'm one of those. Oh, I'll turn against him in a minute. In a minute. You know? Uh, no, you know what? How, when? I really How, when mean When will this. you turn against him? I, in a minute. When it's... <laughs> Now, and if he decides to stay, greatest greatest decision ever made in the history of broadcasting. What was it? Greatest decision ever made in the history of broadcasting. History broadcasting. And by the way, I knew it the whole time. I was, I do, I'll do it all. Yeah, no, no. They, listen, Jake, thank you, but I'm, there's nothing. They, they, my name doesn't even cross their lips. Okay. Doesn't no, cross. I'm going to change my name to NFL Network. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> and I'm going to be NASCAR. And he's going to be NASCAR. That would be the only way they would notice him. And Garrett's going to be yeah. psychic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pat, come to a fair. Get tied into a, a, a routine, you know. Uh, you know, I will tell you, though, and I feel sorry for him. He works four days a week. He gets ten weeks off a year. And he goes home to a beautiful wife, and they pay him $100 million a year. i got to tell you, that, that's, that's got to suck. gotten lately? It's got to suck. Exactly. It's got to suck. Why would you stay? Moving on. Why would you stay? This can only get bad. Moving on. Why would you stay? I wouldn't. I'd be gone. Jake, is well, are, is anything having to do with your work, Jake? Is anything tied into Howard Stern? Jake, yes. Anything tied into your the work? Howard Stern yeah. signing? No, no, no. I mean, we get tied into a routine, you know, where, where mm-hmm. you know, we're in the car all day or in the truck all day. And what, uh, what do you do, Jake? Um... I'm a tree guy from Florida. A tree guy? Oh, he's a yeah. great tree guy. Unbelievable. Okay, let me ask you this, oh, Jake. Oh, here we go. We did Who? it. Yeah. What? I asked him so many questions. He was brilliant last week. Brilliant. Any question. He's great. 
Okay, who is the Howard Stern of your industry? <laughs> uh, that would be a guy named Alex Shigo, Dr. Alex Shigo. He, there's nothing. He the, there's yeah, nothing. There's, Alex Shago. He's the there. best. Yeah. I asked him about um, uh, not tumors but goiters on trees. An amazing discussion. And then I asked him about how to stop the the, the fruiting of the olive tree. You're the best. Hey, hey Jake. Uh, best, yeah. If if I plant a pecan tree, uh, will it? Uh, how how often do I do I water a pecan tree? You know trees. Just like regular house plants, they need water, uh, you know. And people sometimes they think like they plant a tree outside, and you know the 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 earth, you know the rain from the rain is yeah. wa- sufficient water. That's, That's not a- necessarily true, depending on where you live. You know, um, you you well, need. Well, I live in I live in the tree. high desert. There's a lot of water, but it's also sandy. Right, and because of that sandy soil, you get so much leaching that you you probably need to water that tree on a regular basis. Put the hose right when by you, the right say, by the base, right? When you say regular basis, what does that mean? Right so base. you're probably talking, you know, several times a week, two, three times a week. You oh, need to water shit. that. Tree. I got to get home. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay, thanks, man. I'm Jake, serious. Thanks, Jake of Florida. Thank you, my. You know what? Give Christina your name and the name of your company because at jthomas.com I'm going to make you our uh, official and we ar- have to make a shrine to Arborist. Dr. Doctor, what was that? whatever put, put it on there Alex Shigo's on. famous phrase was that he mm-hmm. trademarked touch trees <laughs> wow really uh, wow. Uh, uh, how would that go over in the Howard Stern show <laughs> touch trees moving on moving on I was going to make a joke moving on Means a whole different thing. Yeah, well, moving on. Uh, let's go to Rick of New Hampshire. Hey, Rick, how are you? Jay, love the show. Uh, second time caller. Mm-hmm. But you're a funny bastard, I'll tell you that much. Well, thank you. Um, Howard was talking today. I don't know if you heard when Jerry Seinfeld called in. He said he is planning on doing something, if not with Sirius, with someone else. Well, yeah, I think, you know what's funny, and, and this is the, how, how, Roddy and I were talking about this earlier. You can talk radio, or you can talk uh, talent, but there really is something that he did. All of us tried to beat him. Lots of guys in every market tried to have the craziest show. Impersonate him, yeah. impersonate him. And many people, you know, sounded just like him, and you can have the lesbians and the naked girls and all. But there is an it factor that that he has and and i i can't name all the celebrities that have it but you know people just they just are attracted to it and and uh did he do anything that any of us didn't think we could do no we all it's almost like fighting muhammad ali he just beat beat the shit out of you and you know guys would train and you'd go oh this is the guy and you know there's just the it factor and another company whatever the big giant companies are if they hire him, they know that they make money, you know, that day. Does he want to really work? And if you go back to terrestrial radio, he's going to have to be there at 6 a.m. and not four days a week. I mean, I believe that. I think that, and, and I think that he'll have plenty of listeners and all that, but that's, that's going to be hard work. And to me, you know, this is a great job here. So, uh, it'll, you, you know, know what it is. Huh? If he maybe he'll work afternoons, you know what it is. He might work afternoons. Yeah. I'll tell you what it is. What Howard Stern is interesting, and you can't imitate interesting. I've I've tried to be interesting and failed miserably. <laughs> You're I've very miserably. interesting. <laughs> I'm never interesting. I'm not saying Jay's not interesting. Never. I'm just saying <laughs> Howard's incredibly interesting. I'm going to ask the guy that's building the medieval fortress if he got laid today. You can't fake that. You're the interesting, or you're not. You know what? I don't feel good right now. Well, I because I try to be interesting. I do everything I can. I just said I, I don't. I'm not saying you're not interesting. But I'm trying to be interesting. Don't try. Hmm. It's like you know, it doesn't work, right, Garrett? You know what, Rick? Let's just <laughs> yep. put it this way: he's in the what they call the cat bird seat. Okay. Yes. And and whatever happens, it'll be great, and there's not enough money that they've ever printed and all that. And he's been very nice to me, and yep. um, I think he's um, not angry, and, and I think he's a nice guy, and, every, and there's never been a, a you know, what's no uh, a sexual harassment. You've ne- He's never really had a scandal. <laughs> you know that? Out of all right. the shit that supposedly 
was horrible about him. The yeah. people that accused him of shit had more scandals in their lives than he's never had a scandal. You know, absolutely. So he got divorced. Okay, that happens to everybody. Yeah. But yeah. no scandals when he was single. You know, I mean, so you know, he's just one of those lucky guys. And I, I, um, and he goes to therapy like four days a week or something. That's right. Yep. I gotta tell you. I, I, I'm sorry. Moving on. I gotta tell you. I gotta tell you. Jay. Jay. I'm, I gotta Jay. tell you. No, no, I'm gonna say I this. I see your mouth forming words that should not come out. I gotta tell you. What the fuck could he be unhappy about? I mean, Jesus, Jesus Christ. I don't know. All right. Okay. Well, do you go to therapy sometimes mm-hmm. not because you're worried or, or feeling bad? Do you go to therapy sometimes because it helps you focus or, you know, it gives you a different tool? Woody Allen has gone to therapy for 50 years. Bad example. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know what, Rick? That's moving on. Thank you very much, Rick. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's go Holiday Road, Garrett. Let's do it. Come on, let's go. Let's let's get out of here. Let's ta- let's get in the bus. Let's get in the pull off the highway and into something amazing. Holiday Road, the Jay Thomas Show. Let's go to the Ozarks um, and welcome Billy Williams. Are you there, Billy? Billy Williams. Now again, we have a guest with a name that I might think this was the great. Chicago hmm? Cub right fielder Billy Williams. It's not sweet swinging Billy. Head Mason Billy Williams. Billy, welcome to the Jay Thomas Show with Rodney Lee Conover. How are you? I'm fine, thank you guys. How are you guys? Billy, did you play for the Cubs? No, sir. No. Okay, this is not a Tracy Phillips thing. Now you guys are building in in uh, this the Ozarks in in Northwest Arkansas, where uh, we have a lot of people that travel. Where what highway would you go down to find this giant? Ozarkian medieval fortress that you're building? Uh, normally we'd take Highway 65 south of uh, coming out of Branson, Springfield, Missouri. Branson? Branson, near, near Branson. And the phone service, when did they get that? <laughs> the phone service? Yeah, because it's apparently pretty new. Now, are you on a speakerphone? I am on speakerphone. Well, can you pick phone, it up? Can friend. you pick it up? We can barely hear you. Yeah. We're on the satellite. Billy? Is that any better? Oh, that's much better. That's much better. <laughs> now, Billy, how big will this fortress be when you're finished with it? Uh, it spans about 200 feet across. Some towers are 70 feet in the air. Wow. And now, what would you say the square footage would be? The square footage? Mm-hmm. About an acre. That's about an acre in size. Okay. That's big. How long have you been building the Ozark Medieval Fortress? Uh, a little over a year. And how long will it take before you're finished with it? Uh, 2030. 20 to 30 years. No, no, no. T- the year 2030. Oh, the year 2030. Yes. So 20 more years. Yes, 20 more years. And uh, mm-hmm. are your kids involved? You know, Are you going to pass this? I mean, there's going to come a time. When a boulder falls on your knee or something, yeah. Are your is your family in on this? Are they going to pick up the? Uh, axe well, not yet. Uh, I do have a son. If he decides to pick up the trade, he may he may enjoy. Do you have you put a little project. sledgehammer in his hand yet? Maybe. <laughs> now I'm looking at these pictures, and and your the people that are working on it are using tools from the 1200s. Correct. Correct. Well, tell me about a twelve like a. A hammer that would have been used in the 13th century. What? How do you build that hammer? Uh, we we build it right here on site. The blacksmith forge. Uh, the blacksmith usually it, we use there, recycled material, and and he'll build it right here on site. Is there forge. a ye? Is there a ye old Home Depot near there? Uh, there is. <laughs> Does it say ye old on the front of it, or? Well, I don't know if it says yield, but there is a home. Yield, mm-hmm. yield, lows. Now, what is this thirteen knot rope? Is that all? Is that what you're using to measure everything? Uh, yes, it is. So, when you say uh, now, you've drawn the uh, obviously there are drawings to this thing, and you have you not used feet and inches? You've only used this thirteen knot rope. Yes. Are they about a foot apart? Is it about thirteen feet? Well. They actually use the French terms, which is a cubit, um, a palmist, 
or um palm, um, a cubit, a peach. How big is a cubit? How big is a cubit? How big is a cubit? A cubit is about a three and a half by three and a half. Mm -hmm. Now, now, Billy, um, how old are you? I'm thirty-five. So you'll be in your fifties when it's over, and and you you'll live to be that. But why wouldn't you just kind of at night sneak in, you know, like a a crane, something? You know what I mean? <laughs> you or, ever do that? Or, yeah, I mean, not during the day. It's, yeah, it's I a mean, great no thing. One's looking. Yeah, no one's looking. And then at night, maybe a union group of you know what I'm teamsters. talking. About. Yeah, some teamsters, some some metal guys or whatever. Why don't you just you know what I mean? And then say aliens did it. Just sneak it in there. You know what I'm that saying? That works. Because well, every day for 20 years. What? what? It takes the authenticity from us. Yeah. How co also, how come you're not talking in that Renaissance fair? Uh, well, it's not a Renaissance affect. time. Well, I'm, yeah, okay. Good answer. <laughs> now, what are these outfits that I'm seeing? They, you, they're, they're, you, you're dressed kind of like the monks, but uh, you've got some guys have hoodies. And they're actually carrying these giant stones to build this amazing medieval fortress by hand. There's no truck. Uh, are, are you using any any carts with wheels? Uh, yes, we have carts with wheels. That you made yourself? That we made ourselves here on site. Every, every wow. once in a while, mm -hmm. does a guy with a big cart come by and, and, and yell, mm -hmm. bring out your dead? <laughs> hmm? No. Well, that's going to happen, you know, before the 20 years passes. Uh, have you lost anybody this year? We've lost nobody. Thank God. But some of the people, like, let's say a guy's on there, he's like... He's 80. He's 50, 80. Well, no, he's 50. He's what, 80. 50 or 60. He's not going to make it till the end of the project. And probably not. Will you bury them on right site? there? Yeah. The... Well, I'd like to, but, I, you know, I doubt if their families would let me. Okay. They might. Now, Billy, was they this might. your idea to build a medieval fortress? By the way, it's at um, 1671 Highway 14 West in Lead Hill, Arkansas. And it's opened every day uh, now and, until the end of November. Correct. And, bring, and you'll see the, everybody working and chipping away at the stones and everything else. Um, Whose brainchild was this? Yes, who, who thought of it? It was uh, Michel Gielt. He is the, the founder of the project. He is a Frenchman. And uh, he's got a sister project to this one in uh, Burgundy, France. Ah. And it turned out to be a great success. And how did uh, you get the stuck in the Arkansas the property one. here mm -hmm. went home, which they're, they're French as well. They've been here 17 years, and they went home to visit France and visited the other project and thought it would be a great opportunity, a great idea to do that here with their land. Rodney, your question? How did you get stuck in the Arkansas one? Why aren't you in Burgundy? Yeah. Did you... Say something that offended him. Me, I love Arkansas. Yeah. Oh, you love Arkansas. Oh, okay. I do. You'd rather be building the one in Arkansas. You know, the women in France don't wear underwear. Do you know that? Yeah, well, they got hairy arms too, right? Well, that's true. All right, you yeah, know what? But in times of medieval, didn't they all have? Yeah, that? that's true. Yeah, that, yeah, you know what? I mean, are we but being? We got tit for tat. Down. We got tit for tat. Are we being authentic or not? Yeah, that's right. All right. <laughs> Do you have any women working on it? Back in the medieval times, there would there would have only been those water winches, you know, the women that bring the, the liquids to the men. Uh, do you have any women working on it? We do. Our uh, basket weaver is a woman. Our rope maker is a woman. Uh, the felter is a woman. The felter is a woman. Absolutely. <laughs> That's not surprising. <laughs> Did you felt her? <laughs> My God, Billy. There are too many jokes here. The felter is a woman. I mean, come on. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of jokes. But I gotta, <laughs> and and I have you? Straight. Yeah. Have you now, felt, felt You it? know, Billy, there is a school in um, Charleston, South Carolina, that teaches the building arts of the olden times and stuff. Uh, but it's I don't believe it goes back as far as you. Where have you learned as a young man to 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 make these rocks and to put this thing together where would you learn this this skill well a lot of it is a skill that's just been passed on through generations you know with other masons i'm a third since or third generation mason my grandpa and my dad as well were masons mm -hmm. so uh, as far as having the basic skill of masonry i already have um been passed to me and i've been doing it myself for 13 years and then as well as research you know that i've picked up and studied and 
and a lot of it is trial and error. You know, it's part of our project is to make it a learning process. You can get lots of information by research and by reading and studying, but there's, you know, there's always those blanks you try to fill in, and you don't know unless you do it. What what year uh, does this emulate? You know, what what time period? I mean, uh, the 13th century. Now it says here the one in France was 215 thousand square feet, or at least the roofing was 215,000. Will yours be about that size? Ours is, is going to be a little bit bigger. Ah, Jesus. Right. Now, well, you know what's great about this, Billy? You're one of the few guys I know. you got work for the next 20 years. Sure. <laughs> That's the plan. All right. Is there a reality show attached to this? Yeah. There is not. Ah, Jay. Well, well, well. Yes, indeed. Now, when Rodney and I produce the reality show, there's going to have to be some hammer throwing and medieval cursing. There's you know that. Bring out your dead. You know. Well, you just draw it up, and we'll we'll think about it and consider it. All right. Well, Billy, thank you. Good luck. Now, Billy, uh, you're going to be there the next twenty years. No matter where I am, we'll give you a call every now and again. You betcha. Have you built an entire tower yet? Uh, no, not an entire. We have all the towers up somewhat. Uh, the tallest tower right now is right at 11 and a half feet. Hmm. The doorway is in place, and the lower level of the archery windows are in place. Is there a woman that is in the mm-hmm. process of growing her hair? So when that tower's completed, she's going to be able to throw her hair down and climb Well, up, we're climb trying. None of them's very cooperative. Yeah. All right. Well, Billy, what, do you have um, sh- sheep there and chickens running around like in the movies? And do you ever eat a like a, a, a like turkey a leg, turkey leg yeah. and just bite it off at lunchtime? Well, we're not to that point yet. That, that comes a little at a time every year. Okay. Uh, we do have sheep because the felter, then again, how funny, is used to make clothing. <laughs> the, felter. the felter. All right. Uh, you know, are you a man? Hey, the felter you, and the sheep are here. <laughs> you're a married man, aren't you? Yes, I am. Don't lose your heart to the felter, please. Yeah, or the sheep. All right. <laughs> well, won't. Billy, listen, what an incredible thing for the next. Now, so basically. This is recess, recession proof, isn't it? For the rest of your life. You're not going to do another project. You're going to be... This is your thing. At the thing. Is the money in the bank? I mean, is everything in place? That French check cash? Well, as far as they let me know, it is. Wow. Mm. So that's pretty cool that for the next 20 years, you know where you're going to be. Yes, I do. Or I hope to when, know. When you retire, they're going to give you a sundial? I hope so. I could use a good sundial to pack you know, it's my back. A gold one. Instead of a, a gold... If you said gold sundial, it would have been a good joke. Oh, really? Yeah, I can't wait till you don't come back tomorrow. All right. Thank you very much, Billy Williams. Thank you. Thank the you. head mason at the Ozark Medieval Fortress, and we'd love to call you sometimes and just check in, and, and when you get to 13 feet, you know what I mean? We got rid of him. All right. Yeah. He's gone. I don't think we're calling him again. Really? Why not? A little flat. Oh. What was that noise you just that made? That took a century. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. See, I, I let you pick one holiday road. I thought it was great, Jay. And it goes Thank you, sweetheart. You're Thank welcome. you so much. Unbelievable. Listen, Very the pictures they have, they've built the, radio. the thing that makes the water go. What is that thing? Radio. Aqueduct? No, it's, a, it's a, a, a circle, a wheel, a water wheel of some sort. I mean, they, they show slaves. They have slaves. <laughs> I wanted to talk about the, the felter. Oh, he didn't like that. He didn't like that. He, that... Who was they all the wear medieval garb. But he didn't talk in medieval, uh, you know, affect. He's from, he is from Arkansas, okay? Hey, thank you very much, Christina. You're Can you, you, of course, went to Opus 40. Yep. So you understand how difficult it is. All right. There you go. All right, tell you what. Um, blow me kisses. <laughs> let's, go to, attention. let's go to Mike of West Virginia. Hey, Mike, it's Jay Thomas with Rodney Lee. Mike, Connell. wake up and talk to us. <laughs> hey, Mike. <laughs> No, I'm still here. Mike, uh, Mike. I'm in Virginia now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When the interview started, he was in West Virginia. Nice. Okay. I'm sorry, Mike. Go ahead. Uh, uh, well, I had an idea for a TV show for you and Rodney. Uh, ooh. Uh, and I don't know. I've been thinking about it for a long time. So I mm-hmm. finally. Uh, what is it? Well, what Rodney we? was there, I was trying to try to both. Sure. Hey. What is it? Well, it's a half-hour sitcom. Your show, especially with all the personal stories you tell, mm-hmm. is like a nonstop 
uh, a fountain of stories. Uh, so you start out every show, the first scene is you sitting behind a microphone at the radio show, talking to somebody or everybody, and then you go into a story, and then the rest of the show is you acting out. Acting out the you story. Do it in a reality, in a reality format, or do the first well, back, could go back format. and forth. Could My be. wife would never uh, be a part of it. It would have well, to. Well, that be would fiction. have to be the fantasy part. You could part. fictionalize. You could fictionalize your family, or yeah. leave your. Family I tell you alone. what. My TV wife is going to have huge tits, <laughs> a fabulous ass, and I'll tell you something else. In the show, when I get home, she goes down on me immediately before dinner. Well, there you go. That's the and, show. And, you know, and it, you alleviate the problems that you say you have between the producers of, you know, of a TV show and the radio yes. program conflicting with each other. Yeah, they hate it's each other, right? Kind of yes. promoting it. Right. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, that's a each show fabulous, that you'd, you'd fabulous that idea. And, hey, you know uh, what? This, this idea is so good mm -hmm. that you know what percentage we'd probably offer you on this? Hmm. What's that? Nothing! Zero. Zero. Well, thank you. You know what? That's so, a good one. Years ago. No, I, you, you could you could even it'd be cheap enough to produce the pilot. You guys could probably do it yourself. So we would just shoot did, it right we, here, we and then it might, and we just actually did that. And by the way, it's it, it sounds really great when you're talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes it, you, sometimes it, it misses the mark. Somehow it misses the mark. Yeah, yeah, we just finished doing it, and it's not turning out well. But we're trying. We're trying oh. everything. We're trying everything. But, well, not your idea, a different one. Yeah, we're trying. Hey, look, if that doesn't work out, you know what my next plan is? To hold Howard for ransom. <laughs> Just hey, to kidnap you know, him. Howard's not as big a deal as he thinks he is. He never made it in Chicago. They kept trying to syndicate him. Rodney, am I right? He, they kept trying to put a syndication in Chicago. And I, he think never, Howard, I think Howard Stern is one of the greatest people ever lived. Did he not do well in Chicago? I think he did well in Chicago. Really? Uh, he kept getting beat by local guys all, every time they tried to put him in there. Fuck Chicago. You know what? I'm not well, you, you could have made it. You could have made it big in Chicago. Really? Thanks. Really? Oh, Jay. Oh no, Rodney could have made it. You know why? And I mean this. There are certain markets that if you don't talk like the locals, they don't like you. You got to have that nasal shit going on. Same thing in Minneapolis. Got to have that nasal shit going. And that's always uh, been. That's true. They like local people in Chicago. They really do. Because they could give a shit what's going oh, really? on in L.A. and New York. Johnny, that's Johnny right. B. was local. And, and, yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. Oh, Johnny, Johnny B. was Chicago-based. Johnny well, B. Johnny. tried to go out to, oh, yeah, tried to go out to L.A. And he, he yeah, but Johnny B. did go to Arizona when he left for years. Chicago, he fell he that. Yeah. No, but he's from Chicago, and he has a Chicago accent. Well, and when he went to California, he was awful. Awful. Just terrible. Uh, but he was great he was, in Arizona was, for years. He was huge in Chicago. Yeah. He should have stayed there. Where is he now? Uh, in Chicago. I yeah. don't know. Doing well. <laughs> Everywhere I go, I do the same. Oh. Uh, I shouldn't have said well, that. Well, anyway, I thought it was a grand idea for a TV show. That's a fabulous That's a good idea. one. Thank you. We've already failed at and that. I, All right. And once you, made it, once you made it huge, I can maybe get my name up. Oh, sure. You betcha. Sure. All yeah. right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Scott. By the way, anything said on this show, <laughs> any ideas, property we own it. Of the J. Thomas In a matter of moments. Stay where you are. We'll be right back. You know, I remember when I first moved to New York as a disc jockey, uh, I thought that was, the, and I still do sometimes, that's the worst radio market I've ever heard because everybody was from New York, right? And what's weird is, and New Orleans is the same way. I was never bad enough to work in New Orleans. They like hearing that accent and that familiarity. And I always liked the radio voices, you know, or the like regular, you know, like you didn't know where anybody was from. So I work not to have an accent, and I do a little bit, but uh, but you but turn on the radio in New York, I'm going to be talking like that. I go, Jesus. But then you'd be in the street, everybody talking like that. I guess you want to hear people that that sound like you. I don't know. I always enjoyed listening to radio because the announcer just sounded so 
clean. You know, his voice was clean. Uh, you envisioned, you know, these sparkling teeth, and he was, you know, handsome, and the women were beautiful, and everybody was thin. You know, theater of the mind. That's what I like to hear. Then you would go to an appearance, and you would see <laughs> these ugly radio guys. And, and in the beginning, and I don't know... If, I can't tell you how many guys either had a withered arm or a brace on a leg from polio or something. It was, hi, this is the Mike Charles show. You'd see Mike Charles clank, clank. You know, he'd have some big brace on his leg, you know, or a withered arm. And then you'd hear some woman and you'd meet her. Oh, my God, what a miskite. Good God almighty. It's unbelievable. I It got better. Because once billboards came in, you couldn't really have the picture of the ugly bastard. Here's my favorite. I was replaced by a 400-pound black guy named the Big Boy. Remember him in L.A.? Yeah, you weren't. That's not true. The Baker Boys replaced me. Then yeah. then Big Boy came in. Oh, no, even before the Baker Boys, it was uh, that guy that came in from Afternoons, John. What's his prick? But Big Boy now weighs 180. Yeah, he's kind of he was big medium, and f- medium boy. He was big and fat. He was so big. He was huge. Big boy. Yeah, gigantic. Massive. He, he was so huge, what? <laughs> Couldn't think of anything. Yeah. That's where he goes. throwing it over there. <laughs> <laughs> he went to England, and they knighted him circumference. Thank you. Thank you. You know what? That was a radio delay. I had to, I had to wait for a minute. <laughs> what came first, the chicken or the antibiotic? We've got them all today. Uh, let's go to Pete of Indiana. Hey, Pete, it's Jay Thomas. How are you? Not bad. How you doing? Good, thanks. Um, the reason Howard didn't make it in Chicago mm-hmm. is because that douchebag uh, <laughs> man cow pretty much had the uh, market locked up. Huh. Uh, yeah, but he, he was really fired popular. by everybody. He what? He's been fired by every radio station up there yeah, now. Yeah, but you know what? Howard he Howard went rural Chicago. Yes, but wait a second. He went Man Cow went right wing. Uh he used to be have a crazy show and put down women and all he's like Tom Likas. Now Man Cow is like kind of a right wing guy, isn't he? Doesn't yep. he? Right, he, right. He, yeah, he was on he was on AMWLS uh doing the did, talk radio. Didn't he get religion? Day. He got religion, didn't he? Um he got a little bit of religion, but he still tried to do that zany shit on the right wing radio, and they flipped his switch overnight. You know, I'll tell you another. You know, we've got Glenn Beck over here now at that serious. He's another one. You can imitate that all you want to, but you got to have it. I listened to Glenn the other day, and he's now. Ooh. speaking for God or something, right? And I would think that you'd listen to that and, and think, oh, my God, you know, and not... But he pulled 100,000 people in Washington over you know, the weekend. The, he pulled about 300,000. Three, unbelievable. Somebody was saying a million, but That's I un, that. It's just unbelievable. The only way I could pull that kind of crowd is if, if I gave away a million dollars. No, I would, I would have my rally on Mardi Gras Day in New Orleans. <laughs> Three million people, and I would I would there. take complete credit for the for yeah. the for the <laughs> crowd. Funny. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> now that that Glenn Beck, what was he saying the other day? Because they were saying he was a racist and all this guy. He God, he was about love. It almost sounded like a sitcom, you know, like like a joke. But they lined up. I got to tell you, here's my here's what I can't wait. I hope they cut Social Security. I hope they stop unemployment. Who's they? Whoever these people are in that group. I hope they get what they want. I hope they absolutely get what they want. Did you get what you wanted? In the last, I in the want last four the years? government to give me every fucking thing they can give me, and I want taxes to be as high as possible. So you're a socialist? <laughs> Not a socialist. It well, just seems to work better. That's what you just described. Really? It's been working out the last four years? How's that? I have no how, complaints. How is that working out? I think it's working out great. Oh, yeah. Well, let me ask you a question. Working out great. Do you really have a complaint about when you get your check or whatever? What Do you complain? I I don't complain. All right. It's not about me. Who's it about? Garrett, do you... It's about people who are unemployed. Yeah, that, so that's, that's the 
that's five the years have been that's horrible. That's the economy. The last five years, you liberal Democrats have fucked up this country. Admit well, it. Because we gave people money? You can't give people money. That's yes, stupid. Yes, you can. Absolutely. You enable them. Fine. I mean, like they, I mean, fine. Like they How's it working out now? You know what? This is a guy with no children. How is okay? it working out? Hey, Pete, you I got kids? Child. You got kids? Yes, I do. When you give them money, do they love you more than when you don't give them money? Uh, no, they pretty much uh, get their story straight for the next time they need some money. Thank you. Same thing with the general public. You okay? You know, I mean, I think that this nonsense about not giving people stuff is great. Give them, give them all Doesn't their shit. Do but good. you just complained that we gave Katrina people fifty yeah, grand. Jay. I didn't say they were unhappy. I said I was angry about it. <laughs> what makes me mad about you Katrina... You don't know what you're talking no, about. No. Why don't they ever have a camera on my house? And that way I could lease it more. <laughs> Give you more money. Exactly. <laughs> How about a camera on my brother's house? He <laughs> wow. could sublet the you other side. What? That's a reality Happens show. to be vacant right now. That's a reality show. You know... You know so, you know, on the, it's uh, not called Big Brother. It's now, my Little brother Brothers. was a staunch Republican his entire life. And then he opened up this um, drug testing company. Well, the Democrats... Um, Take drugs. No, the Democrats... Wait a minute. What, oh, no. Uh, the Republicans wanted drug testing, right? The Democrats didn't because they were the unions. That's right. That's how it worked. So he, so he stops that business, and now he's out on his... Well, now my brother's a Democrat. Because they give him all kinds of shit. So he just votes for whoever gives him shit. The Republicans protected him because he wanted drug testing. And then um, when he was no longer in that business, the Democrats gave him all. My brother has every grant a human being can get. I want a grant. Oh, my God. He's got a grant, you know. And I'm, it, I've decided to embrace this socialist bullshit. Okay. I'm you, serious. You have a hundred acres. I gotta get a farm subsidy. You bet your ass. I swear to God. And you can also write off everything you do on that farm. I already do that. You can even make it into a hobby. And I'll show you. I should go on TV with a coat that has dollar signs on it. I can show you <laughs> <laughs> how to make money on a hobby. All right. Hey, uh, Pete, thank you very much. I know that, um, there are a lot of choices of radio shows you could listen to pete but thank you thank you for listening to this one and you know uh, what you pete? Guys, you god guys. be with you pete <laughs> god speed god speed my man what the fuck does god speed mean hmm? <laughs> sounds god like a speed. bad musical god speed well that that means you can go you can speed and you don't get a ticket god speed <laughs> how right? fast god. does god go he hey. goes fast in, he a, wants in to. a 55 can you imagine jesus being pulled over by a by a, yeah what? you know for going too fast. can i see your license sir yes Oh, my God, you're our savior. Yes, I am. <laughs> All right, move along. Move along, sir, but, you know. All right, thank you, Pete. All right, see you later. Uh, the Jay Thomas Show with Rodney Lee Cano. Uh, let me try and get uh, some news in in the last few minutes. Right, Gary? What do we have, four or five minutes left? Six. Show? Wow. Um, a Queen's cabbie said a uh, Muslim, and you guys are back in New York, it's a big story, uh, this kind of um, chubby, studious-looking guy just started stabbing this cabbie for no reason. And the guy had just gotten back from Afghanistan where he was visiting a friend of his who was a Marine. I mean, can you just go over there and visit people and take make a documentary? How does that work? Yeah, I don't get, know. I don't know. The, the the cabbie, his name is um, Ahmed Sharif, began to beg the guys he was stabbing him, don't kill me. I have four kids. If I'm gone, there's no one there to care for them. Is that what you'd be yelling while you're being stabbed? <laughs> That's kind of a kind of a lot to say, isn't it? You know. I I have I have four I have four children. When do you say that exactly? Between stabs? Yeah. You probably yeah. didn't I mean, say anything you can to get the guy off you. I go right and the he somehow got his hand. You have to understand, in, in New York, the cabbie is encased in this 
you know, this plastic bubble. Bank, bank teller glass, kind of. Yeah, yeah. How did he, how did he get his hand through the, the, uh, the change slot? There, well, to there's get in a little there. window that you could, you, yeah, you could do it. That's why if you look at where his stabbings are, they're so awkward that he probably just could, only could get his hand through it. And he was using a letterman, you know, the little, uh, uh, I'll never look at a le- Leatherman the same way again. He was yelling, Assalamu a- 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 Alaikum. Is that what you say? Assalamu Alaikum? Assalamu yeah. Alaikum? Whatever that is. Assalamu Alaikum. Which means peace be unto you in Arabic. Wait, he was stabbing him and saying that to him? Yes, he was. How's it feel now, Muslim group? Okay. Scary, isn't it? That's how we feel. Frightened to death. Um... One reviewer got in trouble when he reviewed the new um, Julia Roberts um, movie and called it Eat, Pray, Barf. He works for the Associated Press. <laughs> <laughs> the headline was printed, Eat, Pray, Barf. Whatever the studio is, say they will never allow him into another screening again. Oh, boo-hoo. He'll have to pay eight bucks to see the movie. Because he called it "Eat, Pray, Barf." Wait, what about freedom of speech? That doesn't matter. Well, they you know, invited him. Oh. They invite you to the screening, yeah. and he he can go see the movies, but you'll never. My so girlfriend you have to like it if yeah. you're invited. No, but they eat, pray, barf. They don't want that. My girlfriend saw that movie this weekend, and did she, she liked it? it? It changed her her outlook on life. Are you serious? She's going to stop stressing about things and live more in the moment. That's oh. what the person in the movie did. I said the same thing about Pretty Woman and Julia Roberts. <laughs> look at my life now. Well, look, the book was about a woman who got dumped and then goes off and travels around the world. First of all, where did she get the money from? <laughs> and she also fucked two really ugly guys, a young ugly guy and then an older <laughs> ugly guy. In the movie, it's it's Billy Crudup was the ex-husband, right? And then some handsome young guy fucks her. And then... Uh, Javier Bardem is the so-called older. I mean, and if you see a picture of the woman, you know, she looks like the back of like a, a tool shed. OK, I mean, it, it's just ridiculous. It's just, you know, and, and and how can you not have a good time and figure it out? If I left today and sailed to somewhere and then went to India, and, of course, you can have a great time. It's yeah. coming back to your shit old job <laughs> and being OK, you know. A woman in Carrollton, Texas, is in jail for murder. She walked in and just blew away her friend, Gregory Branch. Teresa Robbins said she worked at the Busy Bees Pest Control with Gregory Brash, excuse me, in Carrollton, Texas. They were friends. She walked in and she shot him in the upper torso. She got the gun on the Internet. There was no indication that was ever a problem between them. She simply walked into his office and shot him dead as he was seated at his desk. According to the arrest warrant, police said that Robin said she had gotten a sign from God and he told me to distribute the world order information. And the first thing that God told her to do was shoot this guy. And she kept telling the police that he was not only a co-worker, but a friend. And the people at work, of course, have said they they miss Gary. Well, she didn't miss him, did she? She didn't miss Gary. Imagine, imagine you're in your office with a fucking sandwich at your okay. desk. Wait a minute. And you work at the Busy Bee Pest Control. You know, I mean, I think, doesn't Tom DeLay work there now? <laughs> Wasn't he a pest control guy? Uh-huh. So you got this kind of, you know, meaningless fucking job where you, like, kill bugs and shit. And this nut fucking... It's like, what's that all about? I'm going to leave you with that final thought. Try not to be gunned down by somebody at a meaningless job. At least be in the Army or be a, I don't know, a security guard or... Top secret stuff. Something. Yeah. But don't be at the fucking pest control place. Tell you what, somebody walks in the office, I go, What do you want? What's up? You know what you have to have a trash can top with you as a shield? You know, you you hold the top of the trash can up. Bullets can't go through that. (laughs) That's it. Show's over.